Hello. Welcome back, everyone. How's it going? What's going on? Let me see here. Black Gamer, thank you very much for the 13 months. Michael D. Lonzo with the 22 months. Bort, I'm assuming that's you and you changed your name. When did you change your name? Uh, maybe it's not you. I'm pretty sure that's you, though. How's it going? What's up, Robs? Aim to misbehave. Gan. Wonky sausage. All the people in chat. What's up? Let me see. FIFA is not my YouTube channel. No, FIFA is a member of the community who uh, uploads our streams. My streams, DRK streams. And not all of them, but some of them. Um... I don't think I'll be uploading my playthroughs to that YouTube channel that's in the title that I have linked there. Um, but I will have a, a secondary channel for uploads and for collections and for uploading all my uh, streams. Well, maybe not all of them, but a, a lot of them. Um, a lot more than what you see on uh, FIFA's, for sure. Uh, I, like, I have loads of playthroughs saved on my Twitch channel. But it just it's uh, kind of hard to access them. <laughs> it's uh, Twitch's system isn't the best for watching VODs in general. The player can be wonky as well for a lot of people, and you know it'll crash all the time. It's uh, it's a bit of a mess. But um, yeah, hopefully I'll have another secondary YouTube channel to link soon enough with all my uh, with with well, well not not everything, but with lots of my previous playthroughs. Although most of it won't be MGS stuff, you know, all the other games I played, first playthroughs, so all the, all that stuff that I've done over the last few years. Hey, what's up, Colossal Fish, Ghost Boots, good to see you, Coney Jesus, Chungus, welcome back, everyone. I saw that the other day and I'm like, oh, damn, I wonder if Dog knows about FIFA's channel. I wouldn't say like directly involved. It's not like we have negotiations about what what happens. FIFA just uploads what he wants to upload. And I don't know, we don't. Uh, we just never really cared about it, you know. Um, but uh, maybe if I if I get this secondary channel up and running and I'm regular with that, maybe I'll uh, get FIFA to stop uploading because there won't really be much of a point fee for uploading if I have my own secondary channel. So we'll see. Have I seen the newest Bond movie, No Time to Die? Don't you mean No Time to Diet? Isn't that what you're talking about? Hold on. Isn't that the one you're talking about? No Time to Diet, starring Shala Fatska. I haven't seen No Time to Die, but I'm a big fan of No Time to Diet. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's play some MGS three. Hold on. We won't be doing a, a super in-depth run or anything today. We'll uh, we'll keep it fairly short. But uh, we might sprinkle in a few extra calls here and there. We'll see what happens. After the end of World War II, the world was split into two, East and West. This marked the beginning of the era called the Cold War.
thousand feet. Approaching Soviet airspace. Twenty minutes to drop off. Commencing internal depressurization. Equipment check. Arm main parachute. All right. You ready to go? Drop zone still showing a high pressure mass. Cab okay. Good. We've got high visibility. Cigar. Connecting oxygen hose to interior connector. Put on your mask. Does this panty waste know what he's doing? Approaching release point. Ten minutes to drop off. Hey, are you deaf? He said, put out the cigar and put on your mask. Depressurization complete. Checking oxygen supply. Six minutes to drop off, opening rear hatch. Jack, I've got some important news. The head of the CIA has finally given us the green light for the virtuous mission. Virtual mission? No, the virtuous mission. The future of our FOX unit depends on it. If it succeeds, we'll be officially organized into a unit. Virtuous mission? Sounds like some kind of initiation ritual. You know, don't get cocky. This isn't a training op. Right. So what exactly is this wonderful mission? Well... About two years ago, a certain Soviet scientist requested asylum in the West through one of our moles. His name is Nikolai Stepanovich Sokolov. He's head of the OKB-754 Design Bureau, one of the Soviet's top secret weapon research facilities, and the East's foremost expert on weapons development. Sokolov? Isn't he that famous rocket scientist? The very same. On April the 12th, 1961, the Soviets achieved the first manned spaceflight in history. The Earth was blue, but there was no God. Well spoken. The rocket that carried Yuri Gagarin to orbit was the A-1, known as the Vostok rocket. Sokolov is said to be the man most responsible for the multi-engine cluster used in that rocket. After Gagarin's flight, Sokolov left rocket development become the head of the newly established Design Bureau. From a lowly technician to head of a Design Bureau, that's quite a success story. So why do you want to defect? It seems he'd become afraid of his own creations. Afraid? Call it a crisis of conscience. And for that, he left his country and his family behind and went over the fence? Not exactly. One of his conditions was that his family was also to be taken safely to the West. We 
used a mole to get the family out first and succeeded in sneaking Sokolov over the Berlin Wall shortly afterwards. I was the one who conducted the operation. The security on the eastern side was still full of holes back then. Then what? We got Sokolov over in one piece, but the whole ordeal had left him exhausted, and we checked him into a hospital in West Berlin. It took him two weeks and more than 600 miles to get from the research facility in the Soviet Union to Berlin. He was in no condition to say anything coherent. And it was only a week later that we had something much bigger on our hands. The Cuban Missile Crisis. October the 16th, 1962, President Kennedy received word that the Soviets were in the process of deploying intermediate-range ballistic missiles in Cuba. The President demanded that the Soviets dismantle and remove the missiles. At the same time, he announced a naval blockade to prevent further missile shipments from reaching Cuba. But the Soviets didn't back down, instead placing their armed forces on secondary alert. Soviet transport ships carrying missiles continued on course towards Cuba. U.S. and Soviet forces went on alert for an all-out nuclear war. Frantic negotiations were conducted through the UN's Emergency Security Council and unofficial channels to end the hair-trigger standoff. Finally, on October the 28th, the Soviet Union agreed to remove its missiles from Cuba. And so the world avoided a nuclear holocaust. But in order to get the Soviets to pull their missiles out, we had to make a deal. You mean the one where the U.S. agreed to remove its IRBMs from Turkey? No. The Jupiter IRBMs deployed in Turkey were obsolete, and we were going to get rid of them anyway. They had no strategic value whatsoever to either the U.S. or the Russians. The Turkey deal was a ruse, a cover story that was fed to the other intelligence agencies around the world. So what did the Russians really want? Sokolov. They wanted us to return Sokolov. You mean the Soviets pulled out of Cuba just to get their hands on Sokolov? That's right. What the hell was he working on? At the time, we had no idea. We were running out of time. It was either give up Sokolov or risk full-scale nuclear war. In the end, we had no choice. President Kennedy gave in to Khrushchev's demand. The next day, I got Sokolov out of the hospital handing him over to agents on the eastern side. Sokolov kept on screaming, save me, until he disappeared from my sight. Then a month ago, we received some new information from one of our moles. About Sokolov? Yes. He was taken back to the research facility and forced to continue working on the weapon in question under KGB supervision. What's more, it's on the verge of completion. So what kind of weapon is it? Something to do with space rockets? No. Missiles. Same technology. I guess you're right. We don't know the details, but it appears to be a new kind of nuclear device. For half a year now, the Soviets have been conducting frequent nuclear tests at Semipalatinsk. Something to do with the weapon, I assume. We're talking about a secret weapon so big that Khrushchev was ready to pull out of Cuba to get it back. Is Sokolov still in a facility? No. According to our intelligence, he's in Selino Yask, a place in the mountains about three miles to the west that's known as the Virgin Cliffs. The Virgin Cliffs? Nice name for a virtuous mission. They moved him there just recently. Why? Apparently, they're conducting a field test of the weapon, but it's our best chance to get him back. This mission would never have been possible if he was still in the research facility. This is our last chance. Sokolov must have known that, too, when he contacted us. is to infiltrate Selino Yask in the Soviet mountains, ensure the safety of Sokolov and bring him back to the west. If we don't get Sokolov back before that weapon is complete, we'll be facing a major crisis. 
The clock is ticking. <laughs> Once we've confirmed the rescue, Sokolov, stand by at the recovery point. A recovery balloon will be dropped at that point. Helium will be pumped into the balloon to inflate it. The process takes about 20 minutes. Once it's complete, the gunship's arm will latch onto the balloon and pull it up. The Fulton surface-to-air recovery system. I'm familiar with the theory. Take it easy. It's been combat proof. Do you think Sokolov is up to it? The shock will be less than during a parachute jump, and the arm can handle up to 500 pounds. So you're planning on going over the border in a single combat talent? She's equipped with two six-barrel 20mm Vulcan cannons, as well as two 40mm machine guns. It sounds like she could hold her own against a battalion of tanks. Even with the fuel in the reserve tank, we're facing a four-hour time limit. If all goes well, it shouldn't take more than a few hours. Home in time for dinner. But if anything goes wrong, you'll be eating dinner, breakfast, and all the rest of your meals in the jungle. Do you copy? You're already in enemy territory, and somebody might be listening in. From here on out, we'll be using code names to refer to each other. Your code name for this mission will be Naked Snake. I'll be referring to you as Snake from now on. You're not to mention your real name. Snake? What, you don't like snakes? What do you mean? Well, you've eaten one before, haven't you? In survival training. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. I don't know if I'd ever order one in a restaurant, but... Be careful. You might not have a choice. What about you, Major? What should I call you? Hmm. Let's see. I'll be... I'll be Tom. Call me Major Tom. This will be a sneaking mission. You must not be seen by the enemy. You must leave no trace of your presence. Is that clear? This kind of infiltration is the Fox Unit's speciality. In other words, weapons and equipment to procure on site. That goes for food as well. You're completely naked, just as your name implies. Great. Now I see why you asked me if I like snakes. I suppose calling me Snake was your idea of a joke, too. No. There's a good reason for that. I'll tell you later when the time is right. Gotcha. Getting back to the subject, how exactly am I supposed to feed myself? You've been issued a knife and a tranquilizer gun. Use them to hunt for food. You'll also find some medical supplies in your backpack. Yeah, about the backpack. I lost it in a tree on the way down. I see. Well, you'd better go back and get it then. You know where it is? No problem. I can see it from here. It's stuck on a branch. To climb a tree, stand in front of a tree that's covered in ivy and press the action button. I'll be monitoring your progress over the radio. We can't risk violating Soviet airspace, but I'll be in the gunship. 
My frequency is 140.85. I'll give you a call if I need to talk to you. If you need to talk to me, use the send function. Okay, Snake, go get your backpack. All right. Before I go and get that backpack, let me thank some people here. Death Dog, thank you very much for the 14 months. Liquid, thank you for the 15 months, the two in a row. Uh, Fatepi, you're being very generous here with your gifted subs. Thank you, thank you for gifting a sub to uh, Final Tuna, Solidus Ace, Fish, HMNO. Thank you for the 10. Cheers, everyone. Thanks for all the generosity. You know, I never actually call Zero before I get the backpack. Can I get many of the uh, optional story calls before getting the backpack, I wonder? Or any at all? Snake, first you need to find that backpack you lost. Yeah, yeah. Snake, you said your backpack got caught on a tree branch, right? Yeah. Was there ivy growing on the tree? There was, but... Perfect. Perfect. Indeed. You can climb any ivy-covered <laughs> tree by standing in front of the ivy and pressing the action button. Climb the tree and retrieve your backpack. Okay. I never do these calls. Perfect. Snake, first you need to find that backpack you lost. Yeah, I'm assuming all he'll talk about now is the backpack. You can climb any ivy cup. You can... You can... Yeah. You what if I exit the radio screen, open it again, and then call him? Snake, first you need to find MGS3 that... MGS3 can be, uh... Kind of tricky like that. Snake. You can... Okay, I don't think so. The one where he gets angry if you try and leave without it. Yeah, let's... Uh... I don't always do that one, actually. I often forget about it, but I've, uh, I've done it before. Yeah. Snake, where do you think you're going? You can't expect to proceed with the mission without any weapons or equipment. First, you'll need to recover your backpack. It's caught on a tree to the south. Press the action button to climb the tree and retrieve your backpack. Is that clear? It'd be great if he called again after, like, ten more attempts. I don't think he does, though. The focus on the backpack is a nice little touch there, though. What about now? Snake, your backpack is stuck on a tree branch, right? Climb the tree and get it back. You can... You can... What about now? Snake, did you climb that tree? Yes. Good. So the backpack? Not yet. Not yet? <sighs> Don't tell me you went up the tree just to take in the view. <laughs> <laughs> well, I must admit that's not a bad idea. Climbing a tree does give you a wider range of view. You can use it for scouting. But what you need to do now is retrieve your backpack. Understood? Yeah. The backpack is on the branch pointing east on that tree, right? Walk along the branch and get it. Be careful not to fall. You should be able to grab your backpack if you hang from the branch by pressing the action button. <clears throat> okay, that's another one that I don't do. I can't, I can't even remember if I've heard that one before, if it's something I forgot about. That's a good one. Uh, let's call him again. The backpack is on the branch pointing east on that tree, right? Walk along the branch and get it. Be careful not to fall. Hey, what's up, Mr. Man? You should be a... The backpack is on... <laughs> okay, so, uh... 
Hold on, let's go over here. We need to drag this out as much as possible. I know I said this wasn't going to be an in-depth playthrough. It's really not. But I kind of feel like fucking around. Snake, your backpack is... Nothing different when I hang Snake. here? Okay. What if I start doing pull-ups? What about this? What do you think of this, Zero? You can climb. Okay, nothing. Uh, he did warn me not to fall. Right, so what happens if I... Oops, I fell. What do you think of that, Zero? Snake, you're... Okay, I think we've worn this out Snake. now. Huh? Um, what else could I do to waste time? Let's go kill a snake. And see if he says anything about that. I don't think he's going to say anything about this. You can climb any... You can't upgrade your uh, stamina by doing pull-ups, no. You can climb... Not to my knowledge, anyway. There, there are no... Uh, grip... There, there are no levels. Maybe it'll upgrade naturally with your health or something, if you... You know how you can get your health bar to naturally extend by letting your wounds heal? I don't think that affects stamina, though. Okay, I think we've worn this out now. Let's... He's getting pissed. The backpack is on the branch pointing east on that tree, right? Walk along the branch and get it. Be careful not to fall. You should be able to grab your backpack if you hang from the branch by pressing the action button. Okay, that's just a, a reminder call if you're taking too long. Alright. I see you've retrieved your backpack, Snake. To equip a weapon, it's necessary to take it out of your backpack. In the survival viewer, choose weapon from the backpack. Your available weapons will be displayed in a window in the upper left. From that list, choose the weapon you want to equip and press the enter button. For other equipped items, just do the same thing from item. Got it. Use the survival viewer backpack. Yep, that's right. Survival is fundamental to this mission. After you've been out in the field for a while, your stamina will start to drop. If your stamina gets too low, it'll affect your performance. You won't be able to shoot accurately, for example, and your wounds won't heal as smoothly. Keep an eye on your stamina so you don't run out. To recover lost stamina, you can hunt for local flora and fauna. You can use either your tranquilizer gun or your knife to hunt. My only weapon is a Mark 22 Hush Puppy tranquilizer gun? That's right. It's been fitted with its own suppressor. However, the suppressor will deteriorate every time you fire. Once its durability reaches zero, the noise suppression effect will be gone. So don't get too trigger happy with it. The suppressor's durability is shown in the icon. Any weapons and equipment beyond what you're carrying now, you'll have to find as you go. I have to find my own weapons and equipment? Whose crazy idea was this anyway? Solo covert actions are standard Fox operating procedure. You can't leave any traces of your presence. No weapons, equipment, footprints, sweat, or bodily waste. The same goes for bullets and cartridges, too. Your presence in enemy territory is already a violation of international conventions of warfare. There aren't supposed to be any American soldiers in Russia. It could spark an international incident. You can't let anyone see you. You can't let the enemy know you're there. This is a stealth mission. You're a ghost snake in every sense of the word. And there'll be no rescue if you're captured. 
The military and U.S. government will deny any involvement in the affair. Then I'll just have to take care of myself, huh? I'm afraid so. You've been given a fake death pill for that purpose. SIS guidelines stipulate that soldiers on covert ops like this one be issued a potassium cyanide capsule. Tape it to your body so you can take it when you need to. How generous of you. Use it if you're taken prisoner by the enemy. It'll send you into a state of false death for a short time. Fooling them into thinking that I'm really dead. So, how do I come back to life? Just take the revival pill. You mean that thing they put in my tooth before the mission? That's the one. But be careful. If you remain in a state of false death for too long, nothing will be able to bring you back. Remember that. I'll keep it in mind. You said this was a solo mission, right? Right. I guess that means I can't count on any reinforcements. Correct. The mission rests entirely in your hands. A real one-man army. Relax. There's a support team ready to back you up over the radio. Who? I'll introduce them to you. This time, survival is of utmost importance. The first member of the support team will be in charge of monitoring your physical condition, acting as a medic, so to speak, as well as recording your mission data. She's a member of Fox as well, and she's here on the gunship with me. She? Hello, Snake. I'm paramedic. Nice to meet you. Paramedic? As in a medic who comes in by parachute. Aren't you going to tell me your real name? Are you going to tell me yours, Mr. Snake? My name, huh? It's John Doe. And they call you Jack for short. You're a regular Captain Nemo. A name means nothing on the battlefield. After a week, no one has a name. What's your name? Jane Doe. Very funny. I wasn't joking, but I'll tell you my name only if you manage to make it back alive. My frequency is 145.73. She's also in charge of recording your mission data. Whenever you want to save, send a message over the reserved save frequency, 140.96. So saving lets me record my mission data. That's right. It also records the state of your health. Good to know. There's one more person I want to introduce you to, Snake. Huh? Speaking of snakes, you remember the boss, don't you? A legendary soldier and your mentor. Actually, it was the boss that got the DCI's authorization in the first place. She's going to be serving as Fox's mission advisor. The boss is? She also helped me plan this mission. She and I were at SAS together. Jack, is that you? How many years has it been? Boss? That's right. It's me. Oh. Talk to me. Let me hear your voice. It's been five years, 72 days, and 18 hours. You've lost weight. You can tell just by the sound of my voice. Of course I can. I know all about you. Really? Well, I don't know anything about you. What's that supposed to mean? Why'd you disappear on me all of a sudden? I was on a top secret mission. Hmm. You didn't need me anymore. But there were still so many things I wanted you to teach me. No, I taught you everything you needed to know about fighting techniques. I taught you all I could. The rest you needed to learn on your own. Techniques, sure. But what about how to think like a soldier? How to think like a soldier? I can't teach you that. A soldier needs to be strong in spirit, body, and technique. And the only thing you can learn from someone else is technique. In fact, technique doesn't even matter. What's most important is spirit. Spirit and body are like two sides of a single coin. They're the same thing. I can't teach you how to think. You'll just have to figure it out for yourself. Listen to me, Jack. Just because soldiers are on the same side right now doesn't mean they always will be. Having personal feelings about your comrades is one of the worst sins you can commit. Politics determine who you face on the battlefield. And politics are a living thing. They change along with the times. Yesterday's good might be tomorrow's evil. Is that why you abandoned me? No, it had nothing to do with you. I already told you, Jack, I was on a top secret mission. A soldier has to follow whatever orders he's given. It's not his place to question why. But you're looking for a reason to fight. You're a natural born fighter, but you're not quite a soldier. A soldier is a political tool, nothing more. That's doubly true if he's a career soldier. 
Right and wrong have no place in his mission. He has no enemies and no friends, only the mission. You follow the orders you're given. That's what being a soldier is. I do whatever I have to to get the job done. I don't think about politics. That's not the same thing. Sooner or later, your conscience is going to bother you. In the end, you have to choose whether you're going to live as a soldier or just another man with a gun. There's a saying in the Orient, loyalty to the end. Do you know what it means? Being patriotic. It means devoting yourself to your country. I follow the president and the top brass. I'm ready to die for them if necessary. The president and the top brass won't be there forever. Once their terms are up, others will take their place. I follow the will of the leader, no matter who's in charge. People aren't the ones who dictate the missions. Then who does? The times. People's values change over time, and so do the leaders of a country. So there's no such thing as an enemy in absolute terms. The enemies we fight are only enemies in relative terms, constantly changing with the times. As long as we have loyalty to the end, there's no point in believing in anything, even in those we love. And that's the way a soldier's supposed to think. The only thing we can believe in with absolute certainty is the mission, Jack. All right, but do me a favor. What is it? Call me Snake. Snake? Oh, right. Your code name is Snake. It suits you well. That's right. The legendary unit that the boss put together during World War II was a snake. The Cobra Unit. A group of heroes that brought the war to an end and saved the world. As long as you've got a legendary hero backing you up, you'll be fine. Isn't that right, Snake? Yeah. I can't think of anyone else I'd rather have with me. Oh, and one more thing, boss. Yes? It's good to hear your voice again. Same here. After all, who knows if either of us will make it out alive. Snake? You are always best at urban warfare and infiltrating buildings. But this is the jungle. Survival is going to be key. Those CQC techniques I taught you are sure to come in handy. CQC? Close quarters combat, huh? I've been in the Green Berets for the past few years. I'm probably pretty rusty. Not to worry. I'll be here to help you remember. After all, this is your first actual survival mission. I'll be supporting you over the radio. Where are you, boss? Next to the Major? The boss is communicating with us by radio from aboard a permit-class submarine in the Arctic Ocean. My frequency is 141.80. Call me if you need my advice on battle techniques. Gotcha. Your mission is to retrieve Dr. Sokolov. Dr. Sokolov is being held in an abandoned factory located to the north of your current position. Avoid heavy combat and don't let anyone see you. Don't forget that this is a stealth mission. Snake, try to remember some of the basics of CQC. Commencing virtuous mission now. All right. Hey, what's up, Vlad? What's up, Nico? How's it going? Someone was saying there that there's a mismatch between the audio and the video. Can we just uh, make sure? Let me know how it's balanced here with the sound effects on the menu. Is it matching up? Are you hearing the sound as soon as I move from one part, from one thing to the next? It's okay, yeah? Okay, I guess uh, it was a problem with whoever uh, said that. It was a problem with their setup. Yeah, maybe just try refreshing if you're having an issue. There, it, Twitch often has loads of audio issues, audio warping and shit like that. Refreshing will hopefully um, sort that out. Let me just see here as well. Vlad, thank you for gifting the sub to PJ. Cheers, man. And Kuabara, thank you very much for the 12 months. The big year. Thank you. Um, I don't stream on Outer Heaven anymore. 
Um, I when we do marathons, I stream there, but we alternate marathons now between this channel and Outer Heaven. But yeah, I don't make any money off Outer Heaven anymore. I don't get any sub revenue or anything like that. That's DRK's channel. I just help him out over there when we do marathons, and he helps me out over here when we do marathons here. I stream on Outer Heaven when I'm helping DRK to grow his channel. That's DRK's channel now, and he does the same for me when we do marathons on this channel. Hey, thank you very much, Cypher. I really appreciate it, man. That means a lot. Cheers. Yeah, we had to change the way we do things because our taxes were a bit of a mess. We weren't all, like, officially partnered on... Outer Heaven. Major, I've spotted two enemy soldiers. They're probably KGB troops sent to guard Sokolov. AK-47s and grenades. Snake, your presence in Soviet territory is already a violation of international law. We can't let the Kremlin find out that the CIA and the American government are involved. Contact with the enemy is strictly prohibited. Don't engage them in battle either. This is a stealth mission. Got that? The Major is right. The point of this mission is to sneak through the jungle without being seen. The success of the mission depends on how well you use your camouflage. Change your camouflage by selecting Camouflage from the Survival Viewer. The uniform option lets you pick your uniform, while the face option lets you change your face paint. Choosing camouflage that blends in with your surroundings will help you conceal yourself more effectively. Also, don't forget that anything that moves will stand out in the jungle. If you just stand up and run around like an idiot, you're bound to be spotted. But if you crawl instead, you should be able to sneak by without being noticed. You can see how effective your camouflage is by looking at the camo index. The camo index shows how well your current camouflage blends in with the surrounding area. The higher the value, the harder you are to spot and vice versa. The key is to make yourself one with nature. Keep that in mind as you go along, okay? I'll try my best. But for now, I'm going to... Keep wearing this olive drab, if you don't mind, boss. Uh, Chris, you were asking me there. I uh, I often sing along with melodies correctly. Do I practice a lot of music? Not right now. I used to be... Um, I used to study music. But um, not anymore. I used to play drums, and I can play a little bit of guitar, a little bit of bass. Um, I was never particularly great, but I was decent enough at playing drums. I was okay. Huh? Uh, do I want to do some extras here? We can get some pretty huh? funny extras with the boss here. Go on, let's do it. Why not? This guy down here. This guy is special. He has something that the other guards don't have. Let's wake his ass up. Freeze! Oh, it's always fucking scary. Um. Don't shoot me, please. Oh. We're at a bit of an awkward angle here. It'd be a bit easier if we were on a flat oh. surface. I love how you can do this circling thing. In MGS3, really slick. We can just pick up all his items like that. Oh. Don't even think about it. One more. He is one more. There we go. That's what we're really after.
I almost forgot we're playing on NG+. Plus. We can do some, uh, some funny calls later with Sigint. Okay. Uh, did I equip that? I did. Publication with adult-oriented material, full of girly photos and interesting columns. Let's equip that. And the cigar. And let's get naked on top of that. There we go. Perfect. Camouflage. Visibility. You can own. Snake, did you take off your uniform? Yeah. What's the matter? <laughs> Just needed to loosen up. <sighs> I know there's a naked option under uniform in the camouflage window that lets you take off your uniform. But without a uniform on, your camo index will remain low, and you'll burn through your stamina more quickly. So stop acting like a fool and put some camouflage on now! <sighs> Did you hear me? Yeah. Uh, let me just see here as well. Comprehensive Kun, thank you very much for the Prime sub. Cypher, thank you. For the six months now. Cheers, man. Um, Indianos with the 35, Professional with the 11. Cheers, everyone. What is that you have in your hands? Uh, uh, Honestly, when did you start reading magazines like that? I, uh, 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 Didn't I teach you how to take care of business without having to rely on that sort of thing? <laughs> <laughs> anyway... I'm sure some of the enemy grunts will find that sort of magazine as appealing as you seem to. Place it on the ground and you might be able to divert their attention. I bet the boss gives very rigorous hand jobs. Are you smoking a cigar? Uh-huh. I don't approve of you smoking during the mission. Hey, you used to smoke them. Never mind what I did. Uh. But that being said, cigars can be useful in a number of different ways, like getting rid of leeches. Did you say leeches? Yes. If a leech clamps onto you, try pressing the lit end of a cigar into it. The leech should cringe and detach itself from you. If you try to yank it off by yourself, you run the risk of it leaving its teeth inside you. With the cigar method, you won't have that problem. Fascinating. And unlike a cigarette, a cigar burns slowly, so you can use it in place of a torch in dark places. I never knew a cigar had so many different uses. Now you know, but quit smoking them during the mission. Uh. Hear me? Yes, ma'am. I think that's it. Normally, you would ask a fellow... Okay. We're not going to do a crazy amount of extras or anything in this playthrough, but uh, we can do a few here and there. Uh, let me go back to my Olive Drab. Here it comes. <laughs> All right, let's shoot down that nest. But uh, yeah, playing music and playing video games were my two favorite pastimes growing up. Never in a million years did I think it would be video games that would turn into an actual job, not the other way around. 
I guess skateboarding was another one of my favorite pastimes growing up. I never ever in a million years thought I'd ever become a professional skateboarder though. Although I did practice a lot, I got kind of decent. I could do kickflips, burial kickflips, never landed a 360 flip. Tragic. Tried so hard for so long. Fucking 360 flips. So hard to land. Years. <laughs> Years of practice never happened. The west of Ireland is not a great place to practice skateboarding, though. It's hard, really hard to find good spots. Major, I've reached the abandoned factory where Sokolov is supposedly being held. This place is a dump. can't see Sokolov from here. The security is pretty tight. There are sentries posted around the perimeter. I wonder how many are inside. Your objective, Sokolov, is inside the factory. They should be holding him in a room in the northeast section. Northeast section. Got it. Be careful. Your mission is to bring Sokolov back alive. He must not be exposed to any kind of danger. Do not approach Sokolov while in the alert phase. Right. Oh, and one more thing, Snake. You mean there's more? No, it's just that when you get to Sokolov, I want you to tell him something from me. And that is? Sorry for being so late. Is that all? Yes. Understood. Beginning my approach to the target. I'll surprise everyone. My first YouTube video will be a skateboarding video. That would be amazing. Face reveal skateboarding video. <laughs> oh shit. Ooh, that was a slick shot. I'll take that. Fuck you. Mm. Hold on a second. Yeah, fuck it. Oh! <laughs> oh, wow. He caught me at the end of that roll. I remember that happening before. That hasn't happened in a while. Usually I roll... A little bit before that point. Huh? Fuck. I'm gonna get caught again. I didn't think he was there. Ah! It was flawless that first time. And then I just got too greedy. Took my shot too early. Fuck you. Playing it extra safe this time. You know, I actually didn't hate that Silent Hill official skateboard, the design of it. Men, you'll never get it from me. 
No. I'm a CIA agent. I've come to escort you back to the other side of the Iron Curtain. Your CIA? Yeah. I was sent by Major Zero. Yeah. And I got you out two years ago. Zero? I have a message from him. What is it? He said to tell you sorry for being so late. <laughs> Did he now? What does it mean? It means he's a man of his word. But we've got no time for this. You have to get me out of here before they arrive. Who's they? Colonel Volgin of Gru. You in the West know him as Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt? Never heard of him. He's a member of the army's extremist faction, a man who seeks to seize control of the motherland. Ever since the Cuban Missile Crisis two years ago, Khrushchev has been pursuing a policy of peaceful coexistence with the West. Despite resistance and criticism from hawks in the army and the provincial authorities, Khrushchev has managed to suppress the opposition so far. But the failure of his agricultural policies has put him in a precarious position. And on top of that, the tragedy last November. President Kennedy's assassination. Precisely. In a sense, Khrushchev has lost his biggest partner and his power base is rapidly crumbling away. A certain group is plotting to use this opportunity to seize power by rallying the anti-government forces, overthrowing Khrushchev, and installing Brezhnev and Kosygin in his place. The mastermind behind this plot is Colonel Volgin of the Gru. He has control over another secret weapons research facility much like this one, OKB-812, known as the Granin Design Bureau, and is using it to further his plans. But that is not enough to satisfy him. Now he's plotting to seize the secret weapon I have been developing here and use it as leverage in his bid for power. The intelligence says that they are going to make their move during the test. Then, the soldiers outside. Exactly. They wouldn't need that many men just to keep me inside. Their orders were to prevent Colonel Volgin from capturing me. Even if it meant killing me in the process. So it would seem. Volgin will come. I'm sure of it. You must get me out of here before then. Leave it to me. By the way, your Russian is superb. Where did you learn to speak it? From my mentor. Is that so? America is truly a frightening country. Having second thoughts? No. I have no love for this place. Let's go. Major, this is Snake. Sokolov is safe with me. He's doing fine. No injuries. Good work, Snake. Now hurry up and get Sokolov to the recovery point. We'll rendezvous with you there. Roger. What about the sentries? I managed to get past them. I see. What about the boss? We lost contact with the boss some time ago. What happened? It's probably just a weak signal. Just hurry and get Sokolov out of there.
So this is the legendary boss. Huh? Huh? We meet at last. You! You're from the Ocelot unit of Spetsnaz. Huh? What's a crew soldier doing here? Soldier? He's the Ocelot commander. Heh. <laughs> That's Major Ocelot to you. Don't you forget it. Sokolov is ours. Now get out of here. And Ocelot never lets his prey escape. What? Can't say it feels good to kill a comrade, even if it is for the Gru. <gasps> Sokolov, take cover. Huh. You're not the boss, are you? What is that stance? Huh. That gun. <laughs> if you're not the boss, then die. The one guy that just shakes his head. So good. Look at his dancing hair here. I don't think it looks like that in the PS2 version. Smart. You were asking to have your gun jam on you. Huh? Besides, 
I don't think you're cut out for an automatic in the first place. You tend to twist your elbow to absorb the recoil. That's more of a revolver technique. You filthy American dog! <laughs> 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 But that was some fancy shooting. You're pretty good. Pretty good. Major, do you read me? I read you. Snake, you all right? I've run into a few snags. These guys were after Sokolov, too. Apparently, they were taking orders from a Gru colonel named Volgan. A Gru colonel? Part of an internal Soviet power struggle, according to Sokolov. Something between the KGB and Gru. Between Khrushchev's supporters and Volgan's. Sokolov was being guarded by the KGB and hunted by Gru? Snake, it sounds like this could be even hotter than Cuba. I don't like it. Something about the whole thing stinks. I agree. You'd better hurry. Sokolov ran off by himself, but I'll catch up to him. We're counting on you. Cyborg Ninja, thank you very much for the two months. And Giga Fidel Man with the two months. Cheers. We pick up boss a lot here, we can get a mouse trap. Because an ocelot is a cat, and cats catch mice. An ocelot sets people up. Turn around, snake. There we go. You've created a time paradox. The snake, you can't go changing the future like that. Okay. Okay, okay. Takes a lot of stabs to the face. Ocelot unit, Spetsnaz. Yes. A Spetsnaz. The best crew has to offer. They're coming for me. I'm finished. Calm down. I'll get you out of here, I promise. And we've got some of the best backup we could ask for. Look. That's what they were making you build. Yes, the Shagohod, the treading behemoth, a tank capable of launching nuclear IRBM. It can launch nuclear missiles from that kind of terrain? Oh, yes, and without support from friendly units. A nuclear-equipped tank capable of operating solo. Is that thing finished? No, this is only the end of phase one. It won't be truly finished until we complete Phase 2. Phase 2? The weapon's true form. If it is completed and the Colonel gets his hands on it, it will be the end of the Cold War. The end of the Cold War? Yes. And then the Age of Fear will truly begin. A world war. I had no choice but to cooperate. I didn't want to die. I 
wanted to see my wife and child again in America. Please, take me to America, quickly! They cannot complete it without my help. Got it. Let's go. Good work, Jack. What are you doing here? Sokolov comes with me. My friends, let us fight together again. I have waited long for this day. We will fight with you once more. Welcome back, boss. Now that all five of us are together, it's time we go to the depths of hell itself. It's raining blood. Is he crying? Kuabara. Ah, what a joyful scene. Colonel Vogan. Welcome to my country. And to my unit. Boss. What is this? I'm defecting to the Soviet Union. Sokolov is a little gift from my new hosts. Recoilless nuclear warheads. These will make a fine gift for me. This can't be happening. Who is he? Another one of your disciples? Are we taking him with us? 
No, this one is still just a child. Too pure for us cobras. He has not yet found an emotion to carry into battle. What are you talking about? Think you can pull the trigger? Seen my face. We can't let him live. If Khrushchev finds out about this, we're finished. He must die. Wait. He's my apprentice. I'll take care of him. <sighs> Jack, you can't come with us. Done here. Now on to Sokolov's research facility. Shagohad is ours. Drift away. My place is with them now. Snake, can you hear me? Yeah, just barely. Snake, listen to me. You need emergency medical treatment. Can you move? You've got to get those wounds treated. Hang in there. All right, let's get you fixed up. Paramedic? OK, Snake. Just relax, and it'll all be over before you know it. Stay with me. I've seen people in worse shape before. Think you can handle it? Major. The boss. She's defected. We'll talk about that later. First, we've got to get you patched up. Okay, here we go. First, open the survival viewer with the start button. If you select cure, you can start the treatment. Healing is divided into treatment using medicine with the item window button and surgical treatment using the weapon window button. Your injuries include a fractured left elbow and rib bone, 
and lacerations on your upper arms, right elbow, and abdomen. They need to be fixed using surgical treatment. Move the healing cursor with the left stick to the affected part of your body. Once you've selected the affected area, hold the weapon window button and use the left stick to select the medical item and then press the enter button. With this method, you can use items to help your recovery process. To treat a bone fracture, first secure the affected area with a fastener and then wrap it in bandages. That should do it. For lacerations, you'll need disinfectant to clean the wound, sutures to stitch it up, styptic to slow the flow of blood, and bandages to wrap the wound. If you do everything I mentioned, the wound should heal completely. Understood? Yeah. Stay with me. Go into the survival viewer and treat those wounds. Okay, before we do that, there's a cool little detail here. If we look over, look at that skeleton in the background. Reaching his hand out. That's the sorrow. That's the sorrow skeleton. In the original game, they didn't have this camera. Where we could move it around like this. However, even with the old Snake Eater camera, which I just switched to, you could pull it back like this and still see the skeleton. A bit more ominous when you look at it like this as well, that shot. Pretty cool. Yeah, it's the same skeleton that you see um, later on at the end of the Sorrows fight. You know how you go past all the ghosts of the people you've killed and when you make it to the very end, you get to see the Sorrows skeleton. I think they show it again during the boss's story, you know, when she's talking about her mission to kill the Sorrow. Uh, El Rassel, thank you very much for the 17 months. Cheers. This is where he died. This is where the boss killed him. We can see him again during this next scene when we get an R1 prompt. You get a closer look at him as well. I think you can see that he's holding his glasses as well. With the cracked frame. Or the cracked glass. Good job, Snake. We're coming to get you now. Just stay where you are. We'll drop a recovery balloon. Can you set it up? beats paper, the boss wins.
<laughs> Excellent. A great success. Thanks to the boss and her cobras, I have both Sokolov and the Shagohad. What are we going to do with the girl? Who is she? Apparently she's Sokolov's woman. Fast, my dear. A kiss of death. Are you KGB. We may be able to use her. Take her back to the base. Perhaps we should. We have no further use for Sokolov's research facility. I think it's time I gave this marvelous new toy what? a try. Colonel, even if they are our enemies, they're still our countrymen. But it won't be me that pulled the trigger. It'll be our friend, the American defector. You're going to nuke your fellow Russians? <laughs> the Alamo. Colonel!
Flying over the Arctic Ocean, altitude 30,000 feet, approaching Soviet airspace. Arriving at the designated drone launch point. Drone oil pressure and voltage are nominal. Payload oxygen supply is nominal. Power supply to payload antifreeze system shows no problems. No gusts. All systems go for drone detachment. Snake, we can't risk a halo jump this time around. Airspace security has gotten tighter since we were last here. We can't get as close to the ground as we did during the Virtuous mission. So instead, we'll be using one of our newest weapons. Snake, you're being given an honor on par with Alan Shepard. This is our last chance. Show your patriotism. If you fail, you'll be back in a hospital bed again, waiting for the firing squad. <laughs> So how does it feel to be a patient in one of the most advanced ICUs in the world? Would you do me a favor and tell the suits about visiting hours? I'll never get better with them assaulting me day and night with their questions. Must be part of the top brass's inquiry. More like an interrogation. According to them, I'm a traitor and an accomplice to the boss's defection. They're just looking for a scapegoat. Does that mean they're after you too? Mm. Let's just say neither one of us is going to be made a national hero out of this. Does this mean Fox is going to die? No. This Fox is still one step ahead of the hounds. The reason I came to see you today... Jack, it's time for Fox to clear its name. What are you talking about? The situation has changed. We've still got a chance to come out of this one alive. Yeah, what kind of chance? Don't get too excited. Here, have a cigar. It's Cuba. This morning, I had a meeting with the CIA. They decided when they're going to execute us? No. Something even bigger. Yesterday, the White House received an unexpected call. President Johnson? Yes, I hear you, Mr. Chairman. It was a hotline call from Khrushchev to President Johnson. From the head of the Soviet Union? That's right. A few days ago, one of our country's main design bureaus, OKB-754, was destroyed in a nuclear explosion. At about the same time, our anti-aircraft radar picked up a signature that appeared to come from one of your military aircraft. Does any of this sound familiar to you? In retaliation, I have placed our armed forces on secondary alert. Depending on your response, I may be left with no choice but to order the military to maximum alert and unleash Armageddon. With the help of your predecessor, I was able to survive the Cuban incident. But my power is not as great as it once was. If I am to survive this crisis, I must have your full cooperation. I should have contacted you myself. Did you know that one of our soldiers defected to your country a week ago? No. So you haven't heard that? The man who arranged the defection was a Gru colonel by the name of Yevgeny Borosovich Volgin. Volgin? Of the Brezhnev faction. Go on. Who is the soldier? Her name is the boss. She's a living legend. During World War II, she was the one who led us to victory in that war. In Russia, you know her as Voyevoda. You mean... the boss? The mother of your special forces? Yes, that's the one. And she took two miniature nuclear shells along with her. The boss took two miniature nuclear shells? I'm afraid so. I believe they were a gift for her new hosts. The 
Davy Crockett Atomic Battle Group delivery system was completed two years ago. But serious problems were found with the launcher's range and precision. Although they were mass-produced, they've never been deployed in battle. But Sokolov's research facility was completely wiped out. The whole area is polluted. I can only offer you my deepest condolences over this terrible tragedy. So, the boss, with Colonel Volgan's help, stole two experimental nuclear shells and took them with her as gift when she defected. As then, gift. Then, shortly thereafter, Sokolov's design lab, a top-secret military research facility, was destroyed by one of these weapons. Am I right so far? Yes, that's correct. <laughs> And the American cool. government denies any involvement in the affair. Is that right as well? That's correct. We were not involved in any way. Then what was a U.S. military aircraft doing on our radar screen? It was clearly in a violation of our airspace. And yet you say it was not acting under your orders. That's correct. You expect me to believe that this was all the work of a single soldier? I don't know what else to tell you. The army insists that this is all a ploy on your part. I've said it once and I'll say it again. Our government had nothing to do with it. And I would like dearly to believe you. However, I'm afraid my power over the military has weakened since the Cuban incident. I will need some kind of proof that this was not the action of the American government. You have one week. You must catch the boss yourselves and recover the remaining nuclear device. Then, you must find some way to prove your innocence. Prove our innocence? Yes. Preferably something painful. Prove to me that this is not merely another one of your tricks. The boss should be close to Colonel Volgan. How about a little co-action? I would not expect too much if I were you. The political situation here is unstable. And Colonel Volkin is a member of the Brezhnev faction, which seeks to topple my government. One week. You have only one week. And if it is not too much to ask, do something about Volkin as well. What is that supposed to mean? Nothing. It means nothing. Call it a modest gentleman's agreement to ensure our continued relationship. What if we can't prove our innocence? Then I will be unable to restrain the military. I will be ousted, and they will seek their revenge. A nuclear attack on the United States? I leave the disposal of this situation entirely to your discretion, Mr. President. Disposal? If you fail, it will mean the beginning of a new world war. To put it simply, in order to avoid a full-scale nuclear conflict, we have to prove that America was not involved in that explosion. And eliminating the boss ourselves will prove America's innocence? Right. The higher-ups have decided that you're the only one capable of pulling this off. You were her last apprentice. Screw this one up, and we'll both be six feet under. There's no choice. Are the Russians going to be helping us? The KGB has promised to lend us one of their communications satellites so that you and I can talk to each other. That's it? They've also put us in touch with a couple of insiders. Insiders? There was a defection in September 1960. Do you remember it? You mean the two NSA codebreakers who went over to the Soviet Union? Precisely. Since then, they've apparently been training with the KGB for exactly this kind of situation. Their code names are Adam and Eva. I've been told that Adam has infiltrated Volgan's ranks. We've also arranged for him to provide you with an escape route. You'll need to rendezvous with him when you get there. Unidentified aircraft detected, altitude 30,000 feet. It's fast. Estimated 
airspeed exceeding Mach 3. Bearing south. I'm about to lose it. This is Snake. Do you read me? Loud and clear. Glad to see you landed safely. I got blown pretty far off target. Snake, let's go over your mission objectives one more time. Rescue Sokolov. Find out what's happened to the Shagahod, then destroy it. And finally, eliminate the boss. Eliminate the boss? This mission will be codenamed Operation Snake Eater. Because I'll be taking on the boss in our Cobra unit, right? Don't forget about Colonel Volkin. I'm not a hired killer. I know, but that was the Kremlin's demand. Demand? You mean it wasn't just a request? What's it to us if the Khrushchev regime is threatened by the Colonel and his faction? If supporting the current regime helps us avoid a nuclear exchange, then that's what we'll do. And what are the CIA's demands? Our priorities are the rescue of Sokolov and the destruction of the Shagahod. Roger that, Major Tom. Hold on, Snake. What now? I'm changing my code name. It turns out Tom wasn't the most auspicious choice. What do you mean? Well, the truth is, when I chose my code name, I picked the wrong one. The wrong one? Did you ever see the movie The Great Escape? It came out last year. I must have missed that one. Anyway, it's based on a true story about prisoners who escaped from a POW camp in Nazi Germany. The prisoners dig three tunnels as part of their plan, but the Nazis find two of the tunnels before they're finished. The prisoners succeed in escaping by using the last remaining tunnel. The names of those three tunnels were Dick, Harry, and Tom. I get it. You used the name of the tunnel they escaped in as your code name because you thought it would bring you good luck. Yes, that's exactly right. At least, that was the plan. But? But I got the name wrong. The one they escaped in was Harry. Tom was one of the unlucky tunnels. It was discovered by the Nazis before it was finished. I watched the movie again just to make sure. In fact, I even ordered the actual film from the movie company. Yeah, it doesn't sound like the greatest name to use. So what should I call you? Hmm. You know, let's just use Zero, like we've been doing all along. All right, then. Major Zero it is. We'll start over from square one. From square zero. My frequency is 140.85. Oh, I almost forgot. Paramedic is with us again on this mission. Is this her last chance, too? If we fail, she'll have her medical license revoked. It's more or less the same kind of fate. Her frequency is the same as during the Virtuous mission, 145.73. She'll be recording your mission data as well, just like the last time. That frequency is also the same, 140.96. And there's one more person on your support team. His name is Mr. Sigint. He's an expert on the latest in weapons and equipment technology. You'll be going up against some of the world's most advanced weaponry when you infiltrate the research facility. If you have any questions, just ask him. His frequency is 148.41. Mr. Sigint, got it. Adam, your KGB contact, is waiting for you at the abandoned factory up ahead. The same factory Sokolov was being held in last week. Yes, meet up with Adam first. He's cleared the way for you to rescue Sokolov. 
How will I know this Adam guy when I see him? You'll know once you reach the factory. The whole area's been polluted by the fallout from that nuclear blast. No one else would dare come close. The password is, who are the Patriots? And Lali Lule Lo. Lali Lule Lo. Gotcha. You've been equipped with a 45 for this mission. Be careful, it's noisy. I thought standard Fox procedure was procure on-site weapons acquisition. The circumstances are different this time. You're now on an official mission for the United States government. It would be necessary to make your presence known to a certain extent, to the Khrushchev regime at the very least. But remember, this is still a sneaking mission. Snake, if you fail this mission, it will mean an all-out nuclear war. Keep that in mind and proceed with extreme caution. Understood. Commencing Operation Snake Eater. All right. Before we proceed, let's give Mr. Sigan to call. Our new support member. Yo! You're Snake, aren't you? And you're Sigan? None other. I heard that you're an expert on weapons, equipment, and cutting-edge technology. Close. Huh? I am THE expert on weapons, equipment, and cutting-edge technology. <laughs> I'm the guy that designed your trank gun, active sonar, and motion detector. If you want to know anything about weapons or equipment you find in the field, just send me a message and ask. Later. All right. Will do. Um, oh, hey, Togon. I'm just seeing your donation now. I'll add it during the next... Cutscene. Um, thank you for the five dollars. Five dollars to fight the old man. And before that, Solidus donated five as well for fighting the end. Also, I wish you and chat a good Friday, a happy weekend. Hey man, same to you. And thank you for uh, to, to keep me up with your stream after my boost back yesterday. MGS gives me chills. Big love, Solidus. Hey Solidus, thank you for the kind words and cheers for the five. Uh, King Blastoise as well. Thank you very much for the Prime sub. And uh, yeah, happy weekend, everyone. You just heard a horse? You just heard a horse? Yeah. You sure it wasn't something else? I know a horse when I hear one. Paramedic, are there any wild horses in Selino Yask? Do you really expect me to say yes? No. So what should I do? There's only one way through that area. All you can do is move forward. Head towards the sound of that horse. It came from the north. Be careful. Hey, what's up, Jay Browns? Looks like death wasn't ready for you yet. Boss. That arm still hurt? What are you doing here? sons are waiting up ahead. You don't have a prayer of finishing your mission. You're not even armed. Boss! I'm not your boss anymore. There's nothing for you here. 
Go home. Go back to your boss. There's no need to prove that you are virtuous here. This isn't America. should stir things up a bit. You'd better hurry. The border is 60 miles south of here. You ought to be able to run that far. Why'd you defect? I didn't. I'm loyal to the end, to my purpose. What about you, Jack? What's it going to be? Loyalty to your country or loyalty to me? Your country or your old mentor? The mission or your beliefs? Your duty to your unit or your personal feelings? You don't know the truth yet. But sooner or later, you'll have to choose. I don't expect you to forgive me. But you can't defeat me either. You know me too well. Just look at that bandana. If you can't put the past behind you, you won't survive long. <laughs> If we meet again, I'll kill you. Now, go home. This is Snake, Major Zero. I read you, Snake. I was ambushed by the boss. You were what? The drone's been shot to hell. It's up in flames. That's not good. Enemy scouts are gonna come looking for you. Yeah, I know. But what was the boss doing here in the first place? There's gotta be a leak somewhere. No, that's impossible. The man the boss is working with, Volgin, isn't exactly on speaking terms with Khrushchev. I lost my gun. The boss destroyed it. Snake, I know how you're feeling. It's hard for me to believe, too, that a legendary hero like the boss would go over to the Russians that she'd double-cross us like this. But that's how it is, and if you don't accept it, you'll never be able to beat her. That's not the problem. In terms of sheer technique, I'll never be able to beat her. I know that all too well. You've got to do it, Snake. She's your enemy and your objective. Enemy? We were together for ten years, and now you tell me she's my enemy? Enough. Hurry to the factory where Adam is waiting. Scouts have probably already been sent out to investigate the explosion. You've lost your weapon, right? That means you've got no chance of winning in a battle situation. Whatever you do, don't let them see you. Okay, hold on a second. Uh, let's change our camo here. We can cheese this section, but I'm not going to do that. Hold on one second. Hey, what's up, Genome? How's it going? We can get some crazy camo index here. 95%. Practically stealth camo. <gasps> what the hell is this? Almost invisible. HQ? HQ. This is HQ. Patrol here. We have evidence of an enemy intruder. Commence alert formation. Acknowledged. Sending reinforcements. Use extra caution. <laughs> okay. Now, let's just wait for him to turn. Ooh. Easy does it. Wait for this guy to turn his corner. Nice. Almost got attacked by a snake there. Come on. 
Remember when Miller told us about stalking in MGS1? Well, now we can actually do it in this game. And we don't need to put our socks over our shoes to do it. Go bum bum bum. Wait for these guys to pass. Go, go, go. Yeah, I really like the stalking in this. The stalking with the caution music just looks and feels so good. for this guy. Oh, you bitch. Ah. I thought he walked far enough. Okay. Different strat this time. Different guard layout because we're not in caution. Two guys here instead of one as well. Ooh, hold on. I might get spotted here again. Let's see what happens. I want to see if this... I want this guy to see me. Switch to Tiger Stripe so my camo is a little bit lower. Just a little bit. Huh? Yeah, there we go. Who was that? Now he's going to come up here and investigate. I'm going to jump down here. And then when he gets up to that point, I cross the bridge. Please don't see me. Ooh. He saw me, but it's too late. Mr. Kane with the 15 months. Cheers. We were almost at the end of the caution phase anyway. There wasn't much music left. Nah, we're back in Razvets. Completely empty. Get a lot of good stuff when you come back here. Up here we can get an AK. Pretty easy to miss some of this stuff as well if you trigger the cutscene without searching everywhere. Our first cardboard box. Mind detector that we don't really need, but I'll pick it up anyway. And thermal goggles. Hey, TCAL, thank you for the five months. When's a Snake Eater camera playthrough? You can't really do all that much with the camera in this. You can take ghost photographs during the during the sorrow fight, but it's a bit of a pain in the ass. Sorry, I'm late. Cut the engine. They'll hear us. Are you the agent they sent? Are you Adam? I thought you were supposed to be a man. Adam couldn't make it. All right, say the password. <laughs> Who are the Patriots? Who are the Patriots? Answer me! Trapped. Get down!
The name's Eva. This wasn't part of the plan. What happened to Adam? What's your code name? It's Snake. Snake, huh? Well, I'm Eva. Are you here to tempt me? What happened to Adam? Colonel Volgan is a very suspicious man. He decided Adam wasn't the right person for this mission. And you were? Yes. Why? Because I can do things he can't. I heard you used to be a codebreaker for the NSA. I was. Four years ago, I defected to the Soviet Union with Adam. Mauser military. The broom handle. It packs quite a punch. Nice to have when you're on a bike. You held it sideways and used the muzzle jump to create a horizontal sweep. That was impressive. Bet you've never seen that technique in the West. It's imitation, isn't it? Yeah. It's a Chinese Type 17 pistol. Around here, even that's hard to come by. Don't worry, though. The one I've got for you is American-made. Forty-five, huh? Hmm. Incredible. Do you like it? The feeding ramp is polished to a mirror sheen. The slide's been reinforced. And the interlock with the frame is tightened for added precision. The sight system is original, too. The thumb safety is extended to make it easier on the finger. A long type trigger with non-slip grooves. A ring hammer. The base of the trigger guard's been filed down for a higher grip. And not only that, nearly every part of this gun has been expertly crafted and customized. Where'd you get something like this? I grabbed it from a Western munitions armory. It probably used to belong to one of your officers, and there are more where that came from. My you controller had this with came. You, didn't you? Better take this too. What's that? A disguise to make you look like a scientist. A disguise? Yes. You're here to rescue Sokolov, right? Sokolov's still safe then. Yes. He's being forced to continue his work on the Shagohod. Where? At the lab. They've got a whole army of scientists there developing new weapons. Security is tight, but if you disguise yourself as a scientist, you might be able to sneak in. Can we get Sokolov out of there? We'll see, won't we? Tell me how to get to the lab. The safest way in is from the rear. First, you'll need to head north through the jungle. You'll come to a heliport used for shipping materials. Pass the heliport and continue north and there will be a large crevice. Descend into that area and you'll reach a cave. Move through the cave and you will arrive at a mangrove swamp. After the swamp, there'll be a warehouse. Make your way through the warehouse and you'll come out just south of the lab. Got it. And just what are you doing there? <laughs> In close-range combat, a knife can sometimes be more useful than a gun. By doing this, I'll be able to hold a knife at the same time and still keep the gun steady. That way, I can instantly switch between a gun battle and a knife fight. Right, let's get going. Wait a minute. What now? You must be tired. Why don't you take a little rest? I'll be fine. You'll never make it in your condition. It's a jungle out there. 
There's still an hour before dawn. It's dangerous to be out in the jungle at night without a guide. What about you? I have to get back. I can't be gone for too long. They'll start to suspect something. Don't worry. I'll keep you updated over the radio. That's it? My orders are to provide you with information. Nothing more. Oh. You look disappointed. All right, then. I'll do something special for you. I'll stand watch until dawn. Now be a good boy and lie down. What's the matter? I don't know you well enough to trust you. How well do you have to know me to trust me? I don't know if I can trust anybody. Gonna get that? She's right, Snake. You should get some sleep. Although, in your condition, you really ought to be back in the ICU. Whenever you save the game and quit, you'll go to sleep. Sleeping allows you to gain back stamina naturally. Depending on how long you sleep, you may also recover naturally from sickness and injury. When you're tired or hurt, the best thing to do is just get some sleep. So do yourself a favor and take a nap. Doctor's orders, okay? Yeah, okay. What's the matter? We're surrounded. I see four of them. We've got company. It's the Ocelot unit. Let's get out of here. Hurry! Don't forget your gear. Here, give me a hand. This to get to the basement. Damn it! A lot. I'll get past them on my bike. I'll call you later. Okay. I'll keep them busy. Huh? Don't go dying on me now. Here we go. Let's see if we can do this quick and clean. First thing. Let me check my backpack. Mark 22. Let's get on our toes here. Oh, fuck. Ah! Messed it up. That's okay. Backup strats. Get our stuns ready. Not clean. Maybe we can still do it without getting caught, though. Oof. 
move our head up so we don't get hit by our own stun. Ah, this fucking guy. Nice, okay. Come on in. Come on, come on in. Where can he be? Where is he hiding? Hmm? Okay, that trank will What's wrong? That trank will take effect. Where are you going? He's going back out. Oh what a fucking mess. Okay, he dropped. Nah, we'll take the slow path here. Oof, 80%. Pretty good. Where did the other guy go? Need to be careful here. There's one guy on the roof. Ooh! Come on. As soon as he turned his head. Terrible. I'm gonna wait here for the guy on the roof. He should come to this corner. I think that was the shoulder hitbox that I hit. I think I hear him. Yeah, there he is. Wasn't sure where he was, so I thought I'd play it safe. Get on our toes again. The strafe is so powerful in this game. The L2R2 and standing on your toes. So useful. Nice. <laughs> not much of a Metal Gear God here, but not bad. Nice. Easy. Pick up some more ammo. One of these guys should have a suppressor as well. Is it you? It's you. Nice. Count the shots. One, two, three. Four. Five, six. I've been waiting for this moment. That's it. That's the stance. I don't think so. What? A female spy? This bitch is wearing perfume. Stay where you are. I've had enough of your judo. I see you've got yourself a single action army. That's right. There'll be no accidents this time. You call that an accident? Well, it wouldn't have happened if you hadn't been showing off. What did you say? It's a nice gun, I'll give you that. But the engraving gives you no tactical advantage whatsoever. Unless you were planning to auction it off as a collector's item. And you're forgetting one more very basic thing. You don't have what it takes to kill me. See.
six shots. Huh? That thing only carries six shots. The Makarov carries eight. You have to get a feel for how many you have left. This is a high-class weapon. It's not meant for shooting people. Damn! This isn't over yet. Don't. Why? He's still young. You'll regret stopping me. Damn it! I've got to get back before he does! Let's keep going. Uh, I'm playing on a completed file. Did I pick up the camo up here? Let's check. Where did Eva go? Did she swim under the water with her bike? Did she jump up there? Who knows? Let's do a few extra calls here. Some, uh, seeing as though we're on NG+, there's a pretty good call we can do with the Patriot, with Sigint. Let's do that one. And fuck it, let's go for the box call, why not? A classic. Hey, Snake, remember back at the abandoned factory when you whittled the grip of that 45 down? Yeah. I've never heard of a customization like that before. Why the grip? To fit it with a knife. A knife? You're gonna keep the knife and the gun both at the ready? That's the idea. Why would you want to do that? Sometimes a knife works better in close proximity encounters. So I equip both at the same time. That way I can switch back and forth in an instant. Badass. So that's that. CQC. <clears throat> Even though the PS3 has pressure sensitivity on the controller, it's still not as good as it is on PS2. From what I remember, anyway. It, uh, it feels a little bit off or a little bit overly sensitive in some cases. Particularly noticeable when you're unequipping a weapon. Or unreadying a weapon. Sounds like the Cobra unit's members' names came from the specific emotions they each carry into battle. Emotions? Yeah. For unbearable torment, the pain. For true oblivion, the end. For infinite rage, the fury. For absolute terror, the fear. And for unsurpassed bliss, the joy. The joy? It's another name for the boss. Because of the joy she feels in battle, I suppose. Uh. During the war, she had a partner named the Sorrow. Sorrow and Joy. They say there couldn't have been a more perfect pair. Hey, what's up, Philosophy? I actually really like um, how MGS plays with pressure sensitivity. Particularly the locker mechanic. How you have to, like, slightly hold on the R1 button to move your head up to the gaps in the locker to see out. And if you don't, you smack your head against the locker and alert the enemy. <laughs> Always love that. Snake, you said Eva said her Mauser was a Type 17, right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're not doing all of these today. You know that army motorcycle that- Yeah, 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 yeah. 
The Davy Crockett's that the boss took with her when she defected are mortars that fire nuclear warheads. They're named after Davy Crockett, the hero who died defending the Alamo in the Texan War of Independence. Remember the Alamo. That's right. The warheads are equivalent to between 10 and 20 tons of TNT. Every building within 150 yards of the hypocenter is completely obliterated. But the warheads the boss had with her were some kind of experimental super bomb. So they're actually even more powerful than that. I don't even want to think about what happened if she used it again. Snake, you know what you have to do. Yeah, I know. Using the Patriot, huh? Yeah, it's the same one the boss was using. Where'd you get it? Hmm? I said, where'd you get it? Sigint, don't get worked up over details. What? <sighs> Whatever. Anyway, the Patriot is a one-of-a-kind sidearm made especially for the boss. <laughs> it's basically an XM-16E1 with the barrel cut short and the stock ticking off. The idea was to create a large pistol that combined the feel and quick handling of a handgun with the force of a rifle. But with a barrel that short, the recoil is unbelievable. It's tough to aim, but it more than makes up for it in firepower. From the looks of it, it's fitted with a 100-round drum magazine. And it never runs out of ammo? Never. Why is that? Because the internal feed mechanism is shaped like an infinity symbol. Ah, I get it. Yep, that'll give you unlimited ammo. <laughs> Love that. Ah! Now I see. Uh, Snake, what are you doing? I'm in a box. A cardboard box? Why are you... I don't know, I was just looking at it, and suddenly I got this irresistible urge to get inside. No, not just an urge. More than that. It was my destiny to be here, in the box. Destiny? Yeah. And then when I yeah. put it on, I suddenly got this feeling of inner peace. I can't put it into words. I feel safe. Like this is where I was meant to be. Like I'd found the key to true happiness. Uh-huh. Does any of that make sense? Not even a little. You should come inside the box. Then you'll know what I mean. Man, I don't want to know what you mean. Between you and Paramedic, is everyone but me that is hooked up with a Major Strange? <sighs> yeah, well, anyway, I suppose even that dumbass box might make a decent disguise <laughs> if you wear it inside a building. So Sigan has one thing in common with Rose. Oh, man, he can take a few shots. Look at that. Uh, did I equip the bug juice? One interesting thing about the Patriot in this game is that it isn't actually classed as a cheat weapon. Like stealth camo or infinite ammo with other weapons, the bandana, the face paint. You can still get a foxhound rank and use the Patriot. And I think in some speedruns, they do actually use the Patriot. Because there are certain bosses that you don't have to prank. You'll still get the no-kill. Like um, Ocelot. I think in some speedrun, NG Plus or something, they use the Patriot against Ocelot. Or maybe they used to, or maybe it's something that, that was exclusive to like the Tuxedo Run or something. But, uh, yeah, either way, it's not a cheap weapon. Which is kind of unusual. I wonder, is it the same in MGS4? No, it doesn't count as a special item. Snake, are you there? Eva? Did you miss me? Did you make it without any trouble? No one saw me. So you're back with Volgan. In a matter of speaking. What about the boss? Yeah, she's here too. Better be careful. Thanks, I will. The boss and I get along pretty well, though. I guess we traitors have a lot it's in common. It's the same in MGS4? Why would anyone really? want to defect? Betraying your country like that, I, I just don't get it. Are you talking about the boss? Why'd you do it? 
Weren't you born and raised in America? Yes, in a small rural town. I never even knew there were other countries, other cultures, other ways of thinking, until I went to work for the NSA. And one day, I found I'd lost faith in the things I'd been taking for granted. What did you see? What was it that made you want to change sides? You wouldn't believe me if I told you. Try me. I saw the universe. The universe? Not the actual universe. The universe as the intelligence community sees it. I realized that the gravity in this universe was holding me back. That's all. People and countries are both changed by their environment. And by the times. That sounds like what the boss was saying. There's a world of difference between this country and America. But it's only a difference of position, a difference of perspective. Coming here made me realize something. Half of what I'd been told was a complete and utter lie. The other half was a conveniently constructed lie. Where's the truth, then? It's hidden in the lies. Are you lying, too? Who knows? I've been trained to make even the most severe falsehood sound like the honest truth. Weren't you? No. I... Believe, because I have to. Even if it is a lie. That's part of my mission. I'll have to remember that. If you need me, give me a call on the radio. My frequency is 142.52. See ya. Bad humans. I actually forgot about that camo. Isn't that one of the DLC camos as well, or am I mistaken? That is one of the DLC camos, isn't it? I, 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 I know exactly what it looks like. With uh, all the grenades all over it. Yeah, here it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. But it doesn't give you any description. Does it still have that ability even in the HD collection? Do any of the other DLC camos have special abilities? I thought all of these were just for or were just cosmetic. Maybe we can have sex with Ocelot in this game. Maybe I was wrong this whole time. Right, let's go back to Tiger Stripe for now. It should be. The stipulation is that you need to have at least one grenade. Is that the only camo that has a, sp has a special ability like that? Is that the only DLC camo that's like that? Maybe all of them, like, change certain things, and I just didn't know about it. Ooh, go easy. Take that dog out. Okay, Dr. Gray. Interesting. I wonder if they're all broken. The banana camo supposedly makes all the food taste good. That's amazing. <laughs> Damn. I think I saw something. I I uh, I didn't know about this. What's up? Nice. Let's pick up a grenade from this guy. Ooh, are we safe? I think we're safe. Just about.
This is where you pick up the chocolate chip camo, so I'm gonna see if I can do the call here. They sick the tag. The weapon. They sick the. This area is kind of weird, actually. Ah, oh, you wearing the chocolate chip? Oh, there we go. Chocolate chip. You mean this camouflage? Yeah. I've never heard of a camo pattern called that before. Yeah, I know. I just thought it up right now. The chocolate chip pattern is probably designed to provide cover in a desert environment. It should work best against a sandy or rocky background. Makes sense, but why'd you call it chocolate chip? Because that's what it reminds me of. What? Those little round cookies the Major's always snacking on? They're not cookies, they're scones. Major! And it's not a snack, it's afternoon tea. Snack? Tea? Same thing? No, it's not. Look here, afternoon tea is a fine old English tradition. Uh-oh, here we go again. Talk to you later, Snake. The origins of afternoon tea go back to the Victorian era. <laughs> Anna Maria, the seventh Duchess of Bedford, was... All right, let's keep going. Uh, Tiger Stripe. The mummy camo prevents injuries. That's great. With all the bandages. And I guess they're all just broken on the HD collection. That's a real shame. Oh, don't fucking see me. Nice. We're just going to sprint through this area. Feels like sacrilege almost. Boom. Oh, nice! Did he go flying through the door there? He did. Sick. Ah, you're here at last. Looks like the boss's info was right. Twice now you've made me taste bitter defeat. I hate to disappoint the Cobras, but you're mine now. All of you, leave us. You and me. No one to get in our way. Ocelots are proud creatures. They prefer to hunt alone. <laughs> Come on, man. Here we go. It's kind of funny how he immediately turns around and runs away. <laughs> Never really thought about that before. Draw! Runs away. Hey! Don't you turn your back to me. Die! Stay out of this. Uh, I didn't mean to roll there. Ooh, okay. Bum, 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 bum. You won't 
get away from me! Don't mind me. Get back here! Just doing my pull ups for the day. Quit fooling around! Get back here! What's that? Show some respect. <laughs> How many are we at now? Eight? Nine? You making fun of me? Can we get ten before it runs out? Ten! There we go. Ooh! You making fun of me? Okay. There goes his hat. Fusorio, thank you for the five months. Whoop. Ooh, nice. The pirouette. Where are you going? Over there? You think you can hide from me over there? That's so different from simply. <laughs> uh, Son of a bitch! <laughs> I think that's my favorite detail of this fight. He loves that Markor. He really cares. Whoop! Oh! Still got him. That was pretty good. This reload time is exhilarating. I told you to stay. No, no jewel? I think he triggered that earlier. When I was climbing the tree and then he kind of... Cancelled it. Picking up his hat again. Let me try again. Yeah, no. I think he cancelled it. Amazing. I never knew reloading could be so thrilling in the middle of a battle. In the dick. Meet again. Bullshit.
You get a game over if you jump down there during the fight. Uh, let's see, where am I? Oh, hey! You know... Maybe the rainbow camo can... ...light you up down here. Definitely better. Doesn't really light the surrounding area, though. <laughs> uh, Brizzle, thank you for the 15 months. That's silhouette. That's the torch. <laughs> Uh, let's see. We can find night vision goggles here as well, but I'm just going to go straight through. We're not doing a super in-depth run. Just some extras here and there. There's more shit you can do during the Ocelot fight. Not too bad. That fight is just full of little Easter eggs and little things you can do. Like if you wear the croc cap, they'll react to it. They'll start laughing at you. Shoot down the hornet's nest and he'll start doing his spinny revolver thing. Get, getting the hornets away from him like he does in the cutscene after the fight. Lots of cool shit. He reacted to the cardboard box, actually. I can't remember. The lab coat? Yeah, the lab coat might give you a bit of extra... Uh, might light you up a bit more. Here we'll get the M37. Cave seems to be structured like. Oh, hey, we didn't do the uh, naked call earlier. My favorite. Snake, what's up? Why are you naked? <laughs> I know there's a naked option under uniform that lets you take off the upper part of your uniform. But without a shirt on, your camouflage sucks and your stamina goes down faster. You don't get any advantages whatsoever. Sure there are. Like what? It feels good. Man, you do whatever you want. I will, thanks. Just one question, though. What? Is there a way to take off my pants? Say what? My pants, can I? Oh, hell no! This fox unit is a nut fest. <laughs> if I save now, do I get the save? Can I get the uh, James Bond save call even though I haven't saved once in the game yet? I'm not sure. Saving the game, Snake? <laughs> hey, Snake. You ever heard of Godzilla uh, Yeah, you have to get monsters? the Godzilla one first. No, what is it? It's a movie. You haven't seen it? Nope. It's about this monster called Godzilla, who grows to an enormous size in a nuclear test and goes on a rampage in Tokyo. 
Nuclear test, huh? Then the Marshall Islands must be crawling with giant monsters right about now. It's just make-believe. Maybe that's why my pants have been so tight lately. Snake, it's a movie, not a report out of Los Alamos. I know. So then what happened? Godzilla is immune to all weapons, and humanity has no way to stop the monster. Dr. Sirizawa develops a new type of weapon, but meanwhile Godzilla is getting closer and closer to Tokyo, obliterating everything in its path. It was originally a Japanese movie, but they made an American version, too. I recommend seeing the original Japanese one if you ever get the chance. It's mostly mindless fun, but it's also got a serious anti-nuke message as well. Where can I see the original? You'll just have to go to Japan. Really? That's too bad. Well, if you wait 40 years, you might be able to see it in America, too. Why is that? 2004 will be Godzilla's 50th birthday. You think they're still going to be making Godzilla movies, then? Of course. Everybody loves Godzilla. You sure know a lot about movies. I don't suppose you're the movie-watching type, are you? Not really. Okay, <clears throat> then I'll tell you everything I know. When the going gets tough, movies can save your life. It's always good to be able to look at things from a different perspective when you get in a jam. That's the magic of movies. No kidding. Well, I guess it might at least make a nice distraction. That's the spirit, Snake. Have a little fun. Okay, I'm not sure if I can trigger the bond call now just by Do you closing the screen and opening it again. Let's see. Snake, nice. have you seen 007 from Russia with Love? Nah, I don't like those movies. Real spies are nothing like James Bond. It's pure fantasy. Snake, I don't think the Major's going to like you saying that. And even though it's fiction, I can't help but comparing myself to Bond. What exactly don't you like about James Bond? I mean, is it the fantastic gadgets? The cars? The guns? Major. Snake, wouldn't you <laughs> like to have a gun shaped Major. like a pen? What good is a pen gonna do me in the jungle? I'd look like a fool. Then what about a snake-shaped gun? You could make it look like you're grappling with a giant snake and then get a shot in on the enemy while they're distracted. <laughs> okay, now you're being ridiculous. We'll make you a snake-shaped gun that folds up and fits into an attaché case. Will you give it a rest? Oh, I get it. You're worried about how to handle the ladies, aren't you? No. I knew it. Hmm, to tell you the truth, I don't like the idea of playing hanky-panky with enemy femme fatales either. But that's part of Bond's appeal. You could learn a thing or two from him. I mean, what about this Eva? What are you planning to do with her? I... I don't even trust her yet. No, that's not what I mean. You you can't let yourself get involved. This is a game of spy versus spy. She's using you just as much as you're using her. I realize that. You've got to grab the initiative. And to do that, you have to get the upper hand in the relationship. That's what a spy is supposed to do. Get the upper hand? I don't think I'm cut out for that mission. Maybe if you change your code name to 00 Snake. Major. 007 is the biggest <laughs> thing to come out of England since the Mayflower. I wouldn't be surprised if they made 20 more of those movies. Didn't you know? The Major is a huge James Bond fan. Don't get him worked up like this. Worked up? Maybe you don't realize this, but now that you've got him started talking about Bond, I'm going to have to listen to him lecture for a whole hour after he gets off the radio. You have my sympathy. It's too bad you can't enjoy such a great movie, though. I guess I'm just one of those people who can't enjoy spy flicks. Wouldn't Pyramedic love to talk to the Major about Bond movies for hours? That would be amazing if, if you could actually change your name to 00 Snake on repeat playthroughs. And get the snake-shaped gun as a secret weapon. As an NG plus weapon. If you start the game with the Raiden mask, it says Jack above your health bar instead of Snake for the first few minutes of the game until you take the mask off, then it changes. I want to see double O Snake above the health bar. Major sounds like a super obnoxious fan. Probably not fun to talk to. I guess so. Yeah, he just... Uh... 
he probably wouldn't let her speak. Uh, let me switch back to Tiger Stripe. Okay. I'll try and do this fast. Let's see what happens. <laughs> I love how acrobatic he is. Let's get started. He really doesn't look like he's going to be acrobatic, but he is. He looks kind of chubby with all that armor. His big puffy jacket. Uh, okay, right, what are we doing here? Stun him out of his first shot by uh, shooting him with the AK. That prevents him from throwing that bullshit at you. Ooh. Okay, that could have been a bit better. Let's throw a grenade. Don't fucking dodge roll out of this. He is Dark Souls rolls, this guy. Beautiful. Phase two. Uh, let's throw another grenade straight away. Get rid of those bees. Don't roll out of the way, you bitch. Don't roll out of the way. Oh! That was pretty slick. I can kind of respect that. Um, how do I want to finish him? Bum, 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 bum. He's probably going to turn and see me. Let's throw a smoke. Ooh! That's a line I'm not used to hearing. Cheeky. The fast throw. The pain has a pretty uh, wide variety of moves. Fuck you.
Hey, what's up, Dominic? Someone was saying there how they found the pain really hard on European Extreme. Yeah, when you're learning the game for the first time, the pain can uh, be quite a surprise with how challenging he is. And he can be very frustrating, constantly forcing you into the water, especially in that second phase. He's a much more fun fight, though, on the higher difficulties, because you really need to learn his attacks. You can't just bullshit through it. And he has a load of attacks. A lot of rare attacks as well that um, will take you by surprise. Yeah, I don't think the boss is is too bad. You know, there's just really one thing to learn in order to destroy the boss. Just the timing. The counter CQC timing. Um, and it, it can take a, a bit to get used to that. It can take a bit of practice. But once you have that down, you know, that's it. That's the fight. She doesn't have... Um, you know, she doesn't have a wide variety of moves or anything like that. But yeah, the timing can be tricky. I should have thrown a stun there. Your reflexes are old. Ah, you could still do it. You, the, the timing doesn't have to be that precise, but... Um, yeah, it just takes a bit of practice. Nice! I don't want any of those bats, but that's just satisfying. Uh, let's eat for the first time. Oh, I didn't pick up any snakes. What can I say? Can't complain. Uh, Vlad, thank you for gifting a sub to Captain Zori. Fellow captain. Uh, Tiger Stripe Woodland. I think that's all I need here. It's actually crazy what you can get away with here, with just this basic camo. 18%. You just hug the wall here. Ooh, I might not get away with it actually. Nice. And go into this little alcove. When I first went through here, I thought, oh man, I must need, like, water camo and the croc cap and all this shit to get through here, to actually swim through here successfully, but... No, Woodland Tiger Stripe will do it. I don't even need Woodland. Okay, let's take a detour, get the sniper rifle. Go and investigate. Patrol here. We're under Ooh, it caught the other guy. Nice. What's going on out there?
sweet. More ammo. SVD. Hey, what are you wearing now? A uh, tuxedo? What, you late for a wedding or something? Come to think about it, the tuxedo is an all-black outfit. It'll probably help you blend in in a dark environment. One thing you can't do, though, is equip knife-type weapons. And you can't use CQC either. Remember that. A gentleman doesn't use CQC. Get your hands off me. I'm not going anywhere. Really now? How many times must I tell you? Time you resist, your lover will suffer the consequences. Is that clear? Vulcan. Damn you. Hold it right there, traitor. Let's find out just how lucky you are. Watch closely. Three guns has a single bullet in it. I'm going to pull the trigger six times in a row. Are you ready? Uh. hasn't run out yet.
There's no such thing as luck on the battlefield. <laughs> You'd better stay in line from now on. The Cobras will take care of him. Has the CIA dog been disposed of yet? The pain is dead. What? He may be a child, but he's definitely one of yours. I fear Khrushchev may have a hand in this. We have no time to lose. You must eliminate him before the final test. Don't worry. They'll be able to handle it. I'm leaving him to you, the fear. The old man is always sleeping. Is he all right? The end is saving what life he has left in him for battle. Normally, he's dead. But he'll wake up when the time is right. And when he does, it will be the end for the boy. Sokolov isn't worth your love. You can entertain me until the rain stops. Kuwabara, Kuwabara. Uh. Sorrow, is that you? All right, Snipe Early loses today. I'll uh, I'll remove that from the list in a sec. Let's switch back to Tiger Stripe here. Uh, actually, let's go for black. Hey, what's up, Wexford? How's it going, man? Uh, Naka Ninja with the seven months as well. Cheers. Oof. Let's take out the barrels. So we deal some damage to the end. Quite a big chunk, actually. <laughs> I love that. Man, he wakes up when he needs to. What a pro. So yeah, it is possible to kill him there, but not today. <laughs> Really cool how that affects the fight as well. When we deal damage to him there, if you deal damage but don't kill him, 
when you get to the fight with him later, he'll have a little bit of health drained from both his health bar and his stamina bar. Um, let me see. One of the many crazy things about the end fight. Hey, what's up, bloody crow? How's it going? Blindfolded Tuxedo Foxhound Run when? Who knows? Maybe sometime in the future. I could put it if I... I could do it if I put my mind to it. Try and get the barrel here. Nice. I often fuck that up somehow when I try to go for the barrel, even though it looks like an easy shot. Like you'll hit the railing or something. Sweet. Right, Dr. Gray. Everything is, um... Everything is scripted for the most part. Or you can predict things for the most part. <laughs> no way you can do this blindfolded. Somebody, somebody already did play through this blindfolded. He might even be in the chat right now. His name is Apache Smash. Didn't he do uh, MGS2 blindfolded at GDQ this year as well? Something like that? That wasn't like a... Uh... A big boss run, I don't think. He did tanker blindfolded. Right, right. Pretty sure he did all of MGS3 blindfolded, didn't he? I think he was saying he wanted to, like, work through the difficulties. Yeah, I mean, if you know the game inside out, definitely possible. I'd be pretty confident I could beat most of the bosses in this blindfolded. Without too much of a problem. Would still be tricky though, for sure, but definitely not impossible. Oh yeah, I heard about the Sekiro playthrough. Um, weren't they talking about how like you can play it based off sound? Um, like the the certain sounds of the swords clanking. That's how you can tell if you need to parry next. Shit like that. Yeah. I remember years and years ago reading about someone who, uh, a blind person who completed Abe's Odyssey. Just because of how you could um, predict things based off the sounds of enemies, sounds of footsteps, things like that. Yeah, 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 someone just mentioned it in chat there, yeah.
That sounds way scarier to me than trying to beat one of these games blindfolded. <laughs> That's probably because I know this game much better than Abe's Odyssey. Yeah, I'm a big fan of those classic Oddworld games. I've streamed them a few times. Particularly Odyssey, but I've played Exodus a couple of times on stream as well. Wasn't crazy about Soulstorm. Whoa, Jesus, snakes. I want some more. I played a little bit of Stranger's Wrath. I thought it was pretty interesting. I didn't get too far into it. But it, uh, it felt pretty unique. What's wrong? If you're looking for Sokolov, he's not here anymore. <laughs> Put that thing away, you'll spoil my drink. So, you're the intruder everyone's talking about. Typical capitalist dog. No manners. <laughs> and who are you? You mean you've never heard of me? And you call yourself an agent? Very well, then. I am Alexander Leonovich Granin. A man of some importance, if I do say so myself. I am the foremost weapon scientist in the Soviet Union. And the head of the glorious Granin Design Bureau. This is the Order of Lenin. It is an honor of the greatest magnitude, given along with the title of Hero of Socialism to only the finest workers. It was awarded to me in recognition of my brilliant contributions to society. Since the Great Patriotic War, I have created countless weapons in the service of our great communist society. It was thanks to me that we were able to stamp out the Nazi scum. It was I who created the basic design for the mobile ballistic missile system you know and fear as SS-1C. You're crocked, aren't you? I'm merely drowning my sorrow. Because of him, I've got nothing to do but sit here and drink this crap. Him? Sokolov. It's him you're looking for, isn't it? Because of him, I have been stripped of my authority. My research has come to nothing. Look! It is a revolutionary mobile nuclear missile system, a bipedal tank. A bipedal tank? Yes, a walking tank, 
a robot. Are you familiar with the theory of the missing link between apes and humans? Well, this technology will be the missing link between infantry and artillery. A kind of metal gear, if you will. And this magnificent metal gear will mark a revolutionary step forward in weapons development. Metal gear? <laughs> but I won't be used so easily, no. No crying myself to sleep. For you see, I'm going to send these documents to my friend in the United States. What? These bastards will live to regret this. And when they themselves become the targets of my creation, they will know my true greatness. Yes, Sokolov's pathetic Shagohan pales in comparison to my work. What are you going to do with a rocket engine on a tank? About Sokolov. The tank does not need a rocket. It needs something else. Look at these. Nice shoes. No. Legs. Legs that allow it to go anywhere. Just as when humans learn to walk upright. That is the real revolution in weaponry. Don't you agree? But, the fool's in charge, chose Sokolov. And where is Sokolov? My project has been terminated. The philosopher's legacy has been handed over to him. What the hell are you talking about? The philosopher's legacy. Haven't you heard of the philosophers? The Colonel has inherited their immense legacy. Volgin's father was in charge of the Philosopher's money-laundering activities. In the confusion of the war, they somehow ended up with their treasure. And Volgin inherited <laughs> that treasure <laughs> illegally. Cool. We never need to worry about the military budget. The development costs at our facility are all paid out of the Colonel's deep pockets. The weapons born here will be the genes for creating an entirely new form of warfare. The funding for my research came out of that legacy. Came out of it. Now, my money, my men, all have been diverted to the Shagohan project. Tomorrow, they will be conducting the final test, while Sokolov is making the final preparations in the weapons factory at Volgin's main base, the great fortress of Grozny Grad. Here I am, playing host to an enemy spy and drinking myself into a stupor. That's where they moved Sokolov? Yes. And the Shagohod is there too? Of course. Hey, you're not thinking of going to Grozny Grad. Are you mad? It's an impenetrable fortress. I'm sure it is. You'll be killed. I'll take my chances. Wait. What? Listen to me, you fool. I want to help you. Help me? To thank you for your compliment. What compliment? My shoes. Tatiana gave them to me. I wanted to thank you for complimenting me on them. I'll tell you how to get into the fortress. In return, I ask only that you get that idiot out of there and destroy the Shagohard. There is an underground tunnel that runs around the perimeter of the fortress. You should be able to use it to sneak into the base. Head for the mountains. The entrance to the tunnel is located there. Take this. You passed through a warehouse on your way here, didn't you? Yeah. There should have been a locked door inside of it. Do you remember it? Uh... This key... will open that door. 
Beyond that door lies the vast jungle. You can climb up into the mountains from the far end of the jungle. Go back to the warehouse. Use the key to open the locked door and head for the mountains. Got it? Why are you helping me? Unlike Sokolov, the thought of defecting has never once crossed my mind. I love my country. I love this land. I cannot even imagine living anywhere else. I wish to remain a hero of the great motherland. I cannot bear the thought of being hounded into a corner and left to waste away. It is already dawn. We must hurry. I will remain here and nurse my troubles for a little longer. To capitalism! Alright, let's keep going. Uh, hold on one second, guys. Give me a sec here. Uh, confused Kiefer with the five dollars. <laughs> Fighting to get the end off early with old age. Thank you. Let me, uh, let me add that in a second. Cheers, man. Um, Sleeping Lamia with the 17 months as well. Thank you. Cheers, guys. Let's get out of here first. Let's get in the box. To fool these scientists. Oh, not to fool these scientists. What happened? No, it still fooled the scientists. It's the guard that saw me. The scientists will never alert if you're inside a box. Yeah, it was the guard. There we go. Excuse me? I'm doing something wrong. I know what I'm doing wrong. I fucking... I'm leaving the guard there. I don't leave the guard there. That's why... Yeah. Fuck you. Fuck everyone. I'm out of here. I didn't actually mean to take out the second scientist there. <laughs> The SIG spray has some serious range. Now, the box is the ultimate tool for the scientists. They will never alert if you're inside the box. They'll just be perplexed and amazed with this new technology that they've discovered. Uh, let me do a few SIGINT calls here. SIGINT. Grannon said something about putting legs on a tank. Do you know what he was talking about? If you ask me, it's gotta be a joke. Not only is making a tank walk on two legs a technical nightmare, but there's no point in making a walking tank to begin with. Putting legs on a tank would raise its clearance, increasing its frontal projection area. It'd also be less stable. Suppose the legs help the tank travel on bad roads. I don't see the logic in that. Isn't that what treads are for? I mean, anybody who'd seriously consider making a thing like that has got to be a wacko. Come to think of it, there was a guy in the States who wrote a paper on that subject. What was his name? Emerson? Heinrich? Something like that. I don't really remember. Of course, no one took that seriously. Sigint. Grannon was saying that Sokolov's research project was a tank fitted with rockets. Uh-huh. Do you have any idea what he meant? Sorry, beats me. I wonder if it's supposed to increase the tank's mobility, or maybe give the tank short-range missile launching capability. But you're sure it has something to do with Phase 2 of the Shagohod, right? Yeah. Khrushchev traded Cuba just to get this thing finished, and Volgin blew up a Soviet research facility to get his hands on it. 
Whatever it is, it's gotta be big. Gotta be big! Eddie Obscure, thank you for the 19 months. Hey, what's up, Raguchi? How's it going? Uh, let me wear my woodland. And DPM. I think we'll cheese the fear today. Given that we're doing a fairly swift playthrough. No, you don't see anything. No, that's Huey, not Huey's dad. Hey, what's up? Ooh. You can really get away with a lot wearing the DPM camo here. Brazilian wandering spider. Soon a most exquisite pain will engulf your entire body. Your limbs will be paralyzed, your lungs cease to draw breath. Eventually your heart will stop beating. Ah, but what fun would that be? Not a fitting end. The boss is a friend. I will give you fear such as you've never experienced before. Come into my web. It is time for you to feel the fear. All right, are you ready for some cheese? Paramedic! I'm playing dead here. Stop calling me. So we take the fake death pill. We wait for the fear to walk up to us and turn his back to us. Then we use the revival pill. <laughs> Creep up behind him. Get our stun grenade ready throw the stun grenade, turn our back so we don't get stunned by the stun grenade, equip our AK, turn back around, and unload on him. And that's that. The fear! The fear! <laughs> I see it! The fear! Yeah, I bet you do.
Yeah, I would imagine that that's a bug. Lethal weapons deal stamina damage when he's stunned for some reason. Yeah, I think um, speedrunners trip this wire here. They stun him here. And then they get the, the spiked club to hit him. Because it's because that's like the fastest way. Maybe, I'm not sure if that is the fastest way if you're playing on NG+. Maybe you would just use the Patriot instead. But yeah, you can like... Uh, you can use the traps as well. Works on the 3DS version as well. Does that work on other bosses or enemies? No. The reason I'm not entirely sure that it's a bug is because the game has some crazy mechanics, you know? And bosses will have... All the different bosses will have unique reactions to your attacks and different reactions. Um, but I still just... I'm, I still reckon it's, mo it's most likely a bug. Like, 90% sure. Uh, Achilles with the seven months. Thank you. What happens to Snake's stamina when he gets hurt while wearing the spider camo? Uh, do you lose more stamina than normal if you're if you take lethal damage while wearing the spider camo? But even then, it's not tied to to being stunned, right? The whole thing with the fear is that he takes stamina damage while stunned. And I just don't see any logic for why that's the case. Why does being stunned change that, you know? Blast him with lethal weapons when he's not stunned. Takes health damage. When stunned, takes stamina damage. Bam, badam. Badum, badum. Grab some more ammo. Feels too complicated to be a bug. I mean, there are bugs that are way more complicated than that. I, I'm not sure. Is it really that complicated? I mean, he's... He's stunned, and he takes stamina damage. With lethal weapons. It's fairly simple, isn't it? Snake, are you there? Eva, where are you? In the fortress, in Groznygrad. Dr. Sokolov is here too. Is he all right? He's fine. Right now he's busy putting the finishing touches on the Shagohad. Good. That means they haven't killed him. Not yet anyway, but you better hurry. They've already finished the phase two tests. Once the final preparations are complete, they'll have no more use for him. The Colonel won't have any qualms about killing him if he thinks the CIA is closing in. Eva, you can't let Sokolov out of your sight. I know. Snake, do you know where Groznygrad is? Granin told me that I should be able to get there from the mountains to the north, through an underground tunnel. Granin told you? Yeah, he even gave me the key to the warehouse. Why? Because he was drunk, I guess. You've got to be kidding me. Hell if I know. Snake. There's one problem with that route. What problem? 
The mountain entrance to the underground tunnel that leads to the fortress is sealed. You need a key to get in. A key? What about the key Granon gave me? That key won't work. But don't worry, I'll figure something out. I have an idea. There are some ruins at the top of the mountains. Meet me there. The top of the mountains. Got it. Wait. There's something else I've got to tell you. Now what? I heard that one of the cobras is waiting for you in the jungle at the foot of the mountains. He's a legendary sniper called The End. Yeah, I've seen him before. That ridiculously old guy, right? Don't underestimate him. He's known as the father of modern sniping. Is he alone? No spotter? None. He's all by himself. Apparently, he doesn't need a spotter. You can't be serious. The entire forest is on his side. The forest? Stay alert. Yeah. I'd hate to have it be the end for me. Okay. When the fear gets stunned, his whole biological makeup changes somehow. <laughs> and that's why the bullets have a different effect. His whole body changes. Uh, let's see. Snake is just saying that because he heard the boss say it earlier. That's the only reason. He just wants to be cool like the boss. Okay, let's take a little detour here just to get the M60. To make the, uh, the bike chase a little bit less of a chore. Make the bike chase a bit more entertaining. Oh, you bitch! Who was that? Ah! Get on the ground. No problem. And now, I was going to say, now we go to the only optional area in the game, but that's not true. There is also the area where you pick up the sniper rifle before the warehouse. And I think those are the only two optional areas. I guess you could beat the game without going to all of the areas where you fight the end. Technically, you could include some of those. all we want. What happens if you kill the end at the dock? You have to fight the ocelot unit in the end's arena instead. Except you don't have to you don't have to deal with them all. You can just go straight to the exit and move through them. That's still challenging though if you want to just avoid them and go to the exit. Whoop up -a. Was that you? That was you. Go, go, go. Yeah, if you kill the end early, you just have to deal with the Ocelot unit when you get to his fight. Hey, what's up, Gurko? How's it going, man? Ninety percent camel. Can I just 
crawl past these. Ah! What's wrong? I thought maybe I could get away with that. Nope. Fuck your radio. What's going on? Respond. What's wrong? That shot in the shoulder there. That would have been. Ah! Sit down. Jesus Christ! What a mess. Oh hey, hello, another one. The backup is coming. Okay, amazing. And let me try this. Yeah. Don't mind me. See you later. Boodle bump, doodle bump, doodle bump. Am I doing this for content? Wow, I. I I am, uh, I'll take that as a huge compliment. That you think I'm that good at the game normally. Fuck. I can still make mistakes, you know. Um, I'm probably gonna get caught again here. Uh, one second, I forgot to look. Um, okay. So. We're, uh, we're coming to the end. Uh, right now, fight leads with $10 to old ages 5. Uh, as soon as the gameplay sequence begins after the cutscene, that's when all bets are off. That's when it's decided how we dispose of the end. Um, right now, it's looking like Fight is going to win. And if it's a tie somehow, it'll go in favor of the most recent donation. But yeah, as soon as it cuts to gameplay, that's when all bets are off. And uh, thank you, everyone. Pray. Let me linger in this world just a little longer. I have already slept enough for one lifetime. Enough for an eternity. You have my thanks. I have to thank you for waking me. If you hadn't shown up, my sleep would have been bitter. Do you hear me, snake? I am the end. I am here to send you to your ultimate fate. You'll make a fine quarry for my final hunt.
Eva, I found that sniper you were talking about. That's the end. He's a legend, known as the father of sniping. I've got experience sniping in urban and marine environments. What about the forest? Never. I see. Well, that forest is divided into three areas, a river, a plateau, and a clearing. He should be lying in wait for you in one of those places. Sounds like this may take a while. It'll be a test of endurance. Be careful, though. From what I've heard, the End has an almost supernatural knack for camouflaging himself. So, whoever moves first loses. This guy's over a hundred years old, though, so I should have the advantage in terms of stamina. I wouldn't be so sure if I were you. Why's that? I've heard that his body is photosynthetic, like a plant. What is he, some kind of monster? On top of that, he can speak to the forest, too. So in other words, he knows it inside out. Uh-huh. But he doesn't know you. I'm sure you can beat him. Don't worry. I intend to. Okay. Looks like we're fighting him. Uh, Wolfie donated $10. Um, but didn't leave any message. So I'm assuming you didn't want to add it to uh, the end's fate. It's too late anyway. Thank you, Wolfie. I really appreciate it. Uh, Lorenzo, your your message was to fight to the, to the death anyway. Okay, so that wins. Uh, thank you very much, Lorenzo. Cheers, man. And uh, thank you, everyone, for the generosity. Um, we are going to do something a little bit different, though. Before we fight him. We're going to save the game. Dominic. Uh, reminded me. Snake, you want to save? Oh, uh, the yeah. certain... You might not want to. Cutscene. Why wouldn't I? Well, it just feels like something bad could happen. It's just your imagination. I hope so. Um, Dom was messaging me, and he reminded me of a scene that we don't usually show. Um, it's a scene that I was familiar with, but a scene that I hadn't seen for a long time. If we save the game, and put the clock forward, but not by like seven days. Make sure you come back as soon as you can. Usually we'll do this when we're killing the end. Um, when we're letting him die of old age. And you have to put the clock forward by a week. But if you put the clock forward by five days, just a little bit under a week, Maybe something else will happen. Look at Kaz. Uh, set manually. So what are we? One, two, three. That should do it. Uh, I just went forward by one month, didn't I? I think my PS3's clock is incorrect anyway. I didn't set it forward by like a month, did I? I don't think I did. I think I put it forward by five days. <laughs> let's, uh, let's see. I'm pretty sure I did. Whatever it was, I wasn't even paying attention. That's okay, though. We can just reload if we fucked it up. Shh. 
shit. Okay, one more day. Now, if I did, if I put it forward by a month, he'd be dead of old age. Okay, hopefully that works. I'm glad you like it, Shagahod. It's my favorite background as well. If it doesn't work this time, I think I'll just say fuck it. Here we go. Disappoint me, young snake. The moment you close your eyes on the battlefield is the moment you never open them again. That's why I don't sleep here. Well, that's a lie. <laughs> Sick. And now we get brought back to Granin's lab, and we have to run all the way back. Yeah. I think I... I think I found out about that scene before I found out about old age. Back in the day. Really cool, man. All out of stamina as well. Yeah, our food is rotten as well because we put the uh, the date forward. Mm, delicious. All right. What? Am I wearing, uh, am I wearing face paint? I'm wearing face paint. Okay. Take three. Yeah, not suspicious at all without the face paint. Running around like a madman with my bandana.
Oh, fuck off. Oh, shit! Sorry, man. Those doors are sensitive. It's not my fault. Okay, I wonder what starting position he'll be in now when we go back. Woof! How do you get the uh, that end cutscene? You put the clock forward by six days. I think it probably... It may, maybe maybe it just has to be slightly over five days, or maybe I didn't put it. Um, maybe I didn't do it by five days at first when I thought I did. Yeah, like five or six days, and that um, and that'll do it. And uh, thanks, Dom, for showing me that again because I completely forgot. Uh, DPM, there we go. Yeah, just a little under the week. What did he say there as well? That's the, like, that's why I never sleep here. He sleeps there all the time. He passes out during the fight all the time. Maybe he doesn't count that as a sleep. Maybe that's not a sleep to him. Maybe he's allowed to snooze. Maybe he snoozes. Just a power nap. Yeah, I mean, and it does, when he naps like that, it does restore his stamina, doesn't it? Slightly. Uh, shoot the dog. I don't think I need to shoot the dog. You better not see me. Nice. It'd be cool if there was a difference with to his um, stamina now when we get back to him. It'll probably be the same. Yeah, cheers, Dom. I feel like I hadn't seen that in, like, ye many years. We're just going to kill the last guy. What's wrong? Uh, we could blow him up. Do we want to go for the no kill? Wonder would that kill him there? Would the AoE range still get him when he's just above the stairs? Yeah, the verticality of the level may be double A. I really like the warehouse, one of my favorite little zones in this game.
So I wonder, could you stop and put it forward by a day now and still get old age? Or would you have to do, go by another seven days? Ooh, do you get different weather when you come back now? Oh, you do. Cool. I forgot that it even rained here. That's really cool. Hey, Countess with the 15 months. Cheers. Come back for more. Back again. <laughs> I'm ready for you anytime. Now let's get started. All right, let's do it. Uh, I want to see if his parrot is up here. Oh, if you had to deal with the end and the ocelot unit at the same time, that would be amazing. Yeah, I think he's still there. There he is. Yeah, he doesn't have any reaction if you trank it. I should have killed it. What does he do if you kill it? He gets really sad. Oh, my parrot. I'll get you for this. Um, we could try and quickly blast him with a shotgun here. Eat it, then puke it up on him. That's what I... That's my, uh... That's my classic strat. I guess he has to see you do it. <laughs> okay, well, we're not getting his dialogue this time. Or maybe you just have to you call yourself a son of the boss. Shut up. Uh I need to get some more ammo. Can you move through the door? He's probably gonna blast me again here. Yeah, maybe you can just never get the dialogue if you don't kill him the first time you shoot him. Okay, I think he should be up in his usual spot still.
If you kill the parrot, he shows up as a ghost. Uh, in the cutscene as well, once you kill him. In the end's death scene. Did you? Fuck. I wanted him to turn around. Ooh. Ah. Shit. Okay, whatever. Spear! Ooh, you're going this way, okay. Um, hold on. I didn't get caught by that. I'm too wise for your tricks, old man. Oh, we're dealing some serious damage. Come back this way. Okay, let's try and catch him with a few Mark 22 rounds here. Oh, so close. Oh my god. Okay, now I can do what I wanted to do. We're going to try and puke the parrot on top of his head. But you have to be very, very careful with how you set it up. There we go. Uh, did you? Okay. Now, he's kind of clever. You bitch. I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh... Okay. Now, while he's shaking... Uh, while he's shaking his gear, we're going to quickly... Eat the parrot. This bird looks familiar. Disgusting. Okay, that should do it. Oh, yes! Have this. Yes, Go. give me your calorie, mate. That looked like it landed on his head nicely there. I took a shot by mistake. That could have been a little bit cleaner. Oh, I caught him with that. Ah, <laughs> uh, where are my thermals? Why was I spinning on the menu? To make Snake dizzy so he'd get sick. Yeah. Too fast for you, old man. What are you trying to do? I've got a present for you. Are you going to turn around? 
spear. Where are you going this time, old man? Oh, that is... I feel bad. That's cruel. Oh, my God. Probably gonna go for cover right there. Nope. Okay. That was such a shot. Oh, I'm glad he appreciates it. He's hiding somewhere over there. He gets so far away. I should have looked for the footprints. You son of a bitch. The casings from earlier. Foolish. This. I have a present for you. So sick. He is a unique animation if you get him with a white phosphorus grenade. Really elaborate as well, the way he dives and rolls over. Um, okay, where are you going now? Why are you coming back here, man? That makes no sense. Oh, could have finished him. You bitch, where did he go? Which way did he turn? He went over this way, didn't he? Up through here. <laughs> this has been a pretty fun fight. Hey, Wexford, you're a little bit late on the old age. Um, I should have removed the uh, donations, but thank you. I'll, uh, I'll remove it from the screen once we're done. Cheers, Wex. That's him, isn't it? Yeah. Don't want my stomach to rumble when I'm right beside him. You stalk faster if you're in the cardboard box. But you struggle to move through trees, it seems.
<sighs> Mighty forest, lend me your strength. Yeah, now he's photosynthesizing. <laughs> I love that grumble. <laughs> Smoking kills. Spirits of the forest, I thank you. The boss would be proud of you. The time has come for a younger generation to rise. I've been wandering for more than a century, and now my journey comes to a close. What a splendid way to end it all. I can return to the Forum of <laughs> Is the bird a ghost because you ate him? No, the bird is a ghost because I blasted his head off with a shotgun. Then I ate him. Okay. Always a fun fight. Oh. Smacking him with the M60. That just, that felt bad. Alright, it's time. It's time for the infamous ladder. Uh, have I died yet? I... I don't think I died yet. I... got caught a few times. Here we go. I don't have the spats of mushroom, unfortunately. Fuck, I should have grabbed it. It's okay, we're not doing an in-depth run.
Well done, chat. Pretty good performance. Not bad. Uh, well, let's eat a calorie, mate. I want some more. And let me wear some animals camo. Nice. Okay, I'll try and get through the mountains quickly. Let's see if I can pull this off. Get in our box, get our Mark 22 ready. Five rounds. Ah, uh, we can deal with that. I got a quick shot on this guy. Ooh! That wasn't supposed to be a headshot, but I'll take it. I was planning on knocking him out after I got him with a body shot. Hey, how's it going? Just passing by here. Don't mind me. Gonna take a quick shot here. Boom. Insta headshot. We don't even see the guy, but he's knocked out. We don't even have to look at his head. Uh, let's peek up here and get a quick shot on this guy. Need to get out of the box there before this guy alerts. Zero bullets. Fuck. Hey, what's up? Huh? What's this box doing? Nothing. <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna shake this guy down real quick, hoping that he has Mark 22 ammo. No, fuck it. I'll just leave him there. Um, maybe I'll just start killing fools. I think that's what I'm going to do. Excuse me. I could have sworn that first shot was a headshot. Wrong. Nothing's wrong. Hey, what's up? <laughs> Get out of my way. Go on, turn around. There you go. me. No. This is HQ. Smoke grenades. I'm uh, out of practice with the M1911 A1 it seems. Here. Fuck you. What's going on? Respond. Don't you dare walk down here. Go on, turn your head the other way. There you fire. go.
this quick. You look like you could use some rest. I'll be fine. It's just that playing these two roles hasn't left me much time to sleep. Where'd you get those cuts? The Colonel. He found out? If he knew, I'd be dead already. No, this is his hobby. He's a sadist. He gets pleasure out of making people suffer. He's scum. <laughs> Does it look that strange to you? No. I'm the same way. Scars all over. Can I see? No. Where'd you get this one? I got it after defecting to the Soviet Union. I don't think so. It's older than that. Code breaking is a desk job. Where'd you get this kind of scar? You really want to know? Hmm. Well, too bad. Hmm. A girl's gotta have some secrets, you know. But enough about that. You've gotta get going. The Phase 2 trial of the Shagglehot is about to start, and it looks like someone might be coming to spoil the party. Khrushchev? His forces are on their way here. The Colonel is gathering his troops together to meet them. If we don't get a move on, the security will be even tighter than it is now. You'll need this key. It unlocks the door to the underground tunnel. Once you're in there, you can follow the tunnel to get inside Groznygrad. Better take these two. They should come in handy. And take this too. What is it? The food of the future. A well-balanced meal for the space age. It's good to eat some real food once in a while. I'll bet if I kissed you, you'd taste like a wild beast. Do you know where exactly in Groznygrad Sokolov is located? He's in the heart of the fortress, the weapons lab. The weapons lab is divided into three wings. There's the east wing, which houses the research facilities. Then there's the main wing where the weapons are assembled. That's where the Shagohat is. Finally, there's the west wing, which is connected via a passageway to the main building. That's where Sokolov is. To get in, you'll have to enter the main wing from the east wing. Then, go through the passageway on the second floor of the main wing. The west wing of the weapons lab. Got it. There's just one problem. Not again. The west wing is protected by the highest level of security. You need to be colonel class to get in. Colonel class? Here. Look at this picture. Major Ivan Rydenovich Rykov. Pretend you're him. How do I do that? Steal his clothes. You look similar from behind, they won't know the difference. Your face might be a problem, so you'll just have to figure something out. He should be somewhere in the East Wing. All right. But how am I supposed to escape once I get Sokolov out of there? Command said you're supposed to have something ready for me. And I do. There's a lake 30 miles north of here. I hid a wig there. A wig? It's a state-of-the-art ground effect vehicle. A ground effect vehicle? I can't fly one of those. That's okay. I happen to be an excellent pilot. Taking off from a lake is trickier than it looks. It's not like riding a motorcycle. You've got to be more delicate. Of course I will. You've seen how good I am with the bike, right? Hmm. Right. You handle the escape then. I'll head for Groznygrad. Wait a minute. There's something I wanted to ask you. What? What's the story between you and the boss? 
She was like a mother, and my master. And your lover? It went deeper than that. Deeper? Half of me belongs to the boss. Do you love her? No, nothing like that. Do you hate her? Does it have to be one or the other? Love or hate? Between a man and a woman? You bet. For ten years, we lived and died together. You couldn't possibly understand. And you think you can kill her now? <sighs> That's your mission, isn't it? Assassinating the boss? Snake, is there anyone you like? Someone special? I've never been interested in other people's lives. You were interested in the boss. She was different. Really? How do you feel about me? I should be asking you the same question. Me? I can fall in love if it's part of the mission. Even with you. <sighs> Snake? See you around, Snake. Take care of yourself. What about you? I've got to hurry back and play my other part. Are you going to be okay? Not sure. They're not stupid and they know there's a spy. There's no way you could have gotten this far all by yourself. <laughs> Colonel, did he talk? No, he died before I could get it out of him. Wasn't the spy then? Look at this. A transmitter? Exactly. Planted to keep someone informed of his location. <laughs> but does this mean Granin was the spy? Perhaps he was being used by someone else. Perhaps. 
This man was our comrade. Comrade or not, he's of no use to us now. I don't approve of your methods. I don't need your approval. I'm in command here. And that nuclear shell? Still feeling sore about that, are you? What are you gonna do? Report it to the authorities? This is war, Major. A Cold War, fought with information and espionage. We must root out spies wherever they hide. It is kill or be killed. Potential threats must be weeded out. Your feelings are a menace to the unity of our organization. Someone is guiding the enemy's hand. A single man can only accomplish so much. Make no mistake, there is a spy among us. But casting suspicion on our own comrades. The C-3 explosives have been stolen. You think it was the American? No. He could not have reached this fortress yet. Then... who? I'd be careful about suspecting your own men. Boss! Where have you been? The fear and the end have fallen. CIA dog? That leaves only the fury. How can the legendary Cobras be beaten so easily? He's good. Fallen for him? Don't worry. I'll take care of him. What is he after? Must be more than just Sokolov. America is out to destroy the Shagohod and get its hands on your inheritance. The Philosopher's legacy. <laughs> Impossible. The legacy, it... Then they're out to kill me as well. Colonel, tighten the security on this place. He's coming here, I'm sure of it. I'm gonna get the Davy Crockett. boots. Make sure you polish them up properly. <laughs> well, that needs some practice, uh, Eva. That needs a bit of work. That's a secret scene, by the way. You have to hold R1 there to see Eva do the pose. You don't get a prompt for it. There are a few hidden R1s like that in the game. Hidden prompts. Um, the sheep that could. Thank you very much for the two months. Much appreciated. Uh, let's keep rolling here, shall we? Um, we're still all out of Mark 22 ammo. That's not Mark 22 ammo. Any Mark 22 ammo here? AK. Okay. All right. I'll try.
try something fancy here. Oh, nice. That jump has to be very precise. That guy sees me, but it's okay. We can just quickly run over here. Nice. I think that's the fastest way of doing that. Although, maybe not now. I really don't keep up with speedruns. Frame perfect. This next scene with the Fury changes depending on what you have equipped. Really cool little touch. So if we're wearing thermal goggles, Snake will be wearing thermal goggles in the cutscene. If we're wearing night vision, he'll be wearing night vision. Uh, but the coolest one is if you have a torch equipped. Snake will be using the torch in the scene with a CQC stance, and it looks absurd. So that's what we're going to do. Mine's bigger. I am the Fury! of my rage will incinerate you. I came back from space. As I returned, I had one vision. The world set ablaze. And do you know what I saw there? Fury! A great and terrible fury at being alive. Now you're going to feel the scorching heat of that horrible blackness. Here we go. Uh, let me get my Mosin for this. And let's eat something. I want some more. Yeah, double A. I'm not sure where you heard that. But yeah, no, the fury is in every version of the game. Yeah, I really like how they obscure the Fury at the beginning of the game. During the Cobra unit's introduction, you know, when they're all in the chopper. Loads of people don't even notice that the Fury is there. Because he doesn't say anything. Or he's just, you know, he's just there in the background with his helmet off. Staring into space. Pun intended. I think that's the idea they're going for as well. He's just sitting there in the corner, staring blankly ahead. Show yourself!
Oh, we could go for a cheesy finish here. Go! If I didn't trip on the stairs. I wasn't gonna I wasn't gonna go for the cheesy finish anyway. Love this track. Where is he? Oh, get wrecked. Okay. Are you ready for this? Bam, 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 bam. I don't want to finish him yet. Okay, you're coming up this way. Oh! Thought you were going to get me there. Oh, fuck. Okay, he got me. Uh, Ozcam. Fuck off. Feel like Round in circles? I remember we got into this loop last time with it. Fuck, are you gonna come all the way down this time? Burn. Oh, come on, man. Fool. Fool. Uh, ah, fuck you. Boss, this is the end of the Copras. You've got to live on. You're the only one left. I'm off. To join the shop. Do you read me? I'm coming home. I see the earth.
What was the hardest boss for me in my first playthrough? I can't remember. I'm not sure. I was stuck on the end for a couple of hours. I think the end took me like two hours to beat or something like that. Um, that's a different kind of fight. I don't know. I think I struggled with the boss for a bit. But I don't remember any boss um, troubling me all that much. Oh, yeah, I was stuck on the sorrow for a while. I had no idea what to do there. I think I had to look that up. Yeah, that's another really cool detail about the end fight. If you camp in one spot for too long, he'll sneak up behind you. Doesn't he one-shot you then as well? Like, if he manages to creep up behind you, he'll one-shot you and... Um, then he'll bring you back to Granin's lab, I think, anyway. It's another instance where he can bring you back to Granin's lab. Whoa! Nice. The 20% camo mid-roll saved me there from getting caught. See how I'm at minus 25% while I was rolling. Uh, I got an extra 5% camo and that's what stopped me there from getting caught. Yeah, it triggers a cutscene as well, doesn't it? That's another thing we need to show more often. I wonder how long you have to camp for. And if it's always the same amount of time. Yeah, it's impossible to get killed during the end fight. You'll only get tranked. I knew that was slightly risky. Um, yeah, go for splitter. Fuck this area. I'm taking it slow this time. You. Are you going to notice the guy? Sometimes he'll notice this guy. Sometimes he won't. And it just depends on when you shoot him, I think. Um, this guy as well. Huh? Unbelievable. The enemy is close wide. Fuck you. Oh, God. Okay. Grozny grads. Let's get Rykov. And now here, I want to miss him on purpose there. Just to get a caution. The caution will change Rykov's pattern. And we can just go upstairs and wait for him. Huh? This is HQ. What's going on? Bam, badam. Acknowledged. Sending reinforcements. Use extra caution. 
Here he comes. Any second now. Battle loop, 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 loop. Now I'm just waiting for this guy outside to turn. There we go. Now I think I'm safe to drag him. Hmm. We can do a couple of Easter eggs here, I guess. True, isn't it? Speak. No, never, never heard the name before. Speak. You can kill him, yep. He'll show up as a ghost during the Sorrows River as well. And his ghost is fucking terrifying. He cups his balls like Raiden in, in Arsenal Gear at the end of MGS2. But with some very strange head animations and creepy eyes. Um, okay. There are more Easter eggs you can do with uh, Rykov there as well. We're not doing a super in-depth playthrough, so I'm not like showing every last little thing in the game. But uh, you can get him to grab your balls if you knock into him while wearing um, the Rykov mask and the scientist outfit. Uh, you can get him to stare at your Rykov mask, and he'll admire it as if he's looking into a mirror. He'll go, how beautiful, while staring at you with the, uh, with the Rykov mask. <laughs> he can also cartwheel into you as well. That's something that's really hard to trigger. Um, I don't know how to trigger it consistently, but he does have Raiden's MGS2 cartwheel, and he'll cartwheel into you uh, if you trigger an alert. Uh, he has his punch-kick combo as well, which is much easier to trigger. Uh, another really cool easter egg, which we don't show nearly enough, is... Uh, you know how you can get him to run to the bathroom? Um, if you wait in the bathroom w uh, wearing stealth camo, he'll say something like, I feels like someone is watching me, or something like that. If you if you hide in the bathroom with him while wearing stealth camo, he has some some line that comments on it, or he feels like he's being watched. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Ah! 
Oh, I wish you could spin around while doing the salute, but you can't. How do they react to me if I'm in the box? Huh? Now they know. They know I'm not Rykov if I'm in the box. Okay. You can count on me. What about the Philosopher's Legacy? I don't know anything about that. What are you... Are you trying to kill me? What's the matter? <gasps> I know nothing, I swear it. <gasps> no one but the Colonel knows of the Legacy. I see. No, don't! Oh! the man from the CIA. What are you doing here? I told you before, didn't I? I'm going to get you out of here. <laughs> A man of honor, just like your commander. But I'm afraid you're too late. Too late? Don't tell me, the Shagahods. <laughs> exactly. The final preparations for phase two are complete. Sokolov, what exactly is Phase 2? To put it in technical terms, it's a composite range extension system for medium-range ballistic missiles. The Shagahod was originally designed as a tank that could launch nuclear missiles from any type of terrain. There was just one problem we couldn't figure out how to solve. The ICBMs we have today are simply too big for the Shagohod to carry. But the military would not hear of it. They demanded a weapon that could launch a nuclear missile directly into the American homeland. That is when I came up with the idea for Phase 2. But there's no way you could load an ICBM onto the Shagohod. So how do you do it? By accelerating the Shagohod itself. Accelerating it. In phase two, a rocket booster unit is attached to the frame of the Shagohod. 
The unit incorporates the same technology used in the Vostok rocket that sent Major Gagarin into space. Using this booster, the Shagohard can achieve a land speed of over 300 miles per hour. That monster can go more than 300 miles per hour? Yes. And from this state of accelerated motion, it launches a nuclear missile. So, the Shagohard acts like the first stage of a rocket. Yes, precisely. The range of the missile launched by the Shagohard thus increases from 2,500 miles to 6,000 miles. 6,000 miles? That's enough to strike anywhere in the United States. Not only that, with the Shagohard, there's no need to construct giant silos like the ones used to house ICBMs. All you need is a runway about three miles in length, or its equivalent. And you can launch a thermonuclear strike against any location in the United States from anywhere in the Soviet Union. It cannot be detected by spy planes or satellites. It's a mobile fortress, capable of deploying in secret and launching its payload at any time. A weapon from hell. The completed prototype now sits in the hangar. At present, it is the only one of its kind. But Volkin is planning to mass-produce them based on that prototype. And deploy them all over the Soviet Union. Yes. And that's not the end of it. He's going to ship them to Eastern Europe, to Asia, to all the countries of the Eastern Bloc. Even worse, he intends to use the Shagohar as bait to foment armed uprisings among dictators, ethnic insurgents, and revolutionary groups throughout the Third World. His funds are nearly limitless. He could start mass production tomorrow if he wanted. The reason that tensions between East and West have settled into a Cold War is because each side fears the other's power. Deterrence. The idea of using threats to keep one's enemy in check is the perfect word to sum up this state of affairs. But the Shagohard goes far beyond the level of threat. It will render the concept of deterrence utterly meaningless. If such a weapon is unleashed on the world, it will not be long before all nations are engulfed in conflict. The Cold War will end and the entire planet will be consumed by the fires of war. Vulcan and the Shagohard will be at the center of it all. So you see, it's already too late. No, it's not too late. What do you mean? We've still got a chance. All we have to do is destroy the prototype and the whole facility before they can mass produce it. But just tell me what I need to do to destroy this place. <laughs> All right. The liquid fuel used in the rocket engine is stored in a tank. If you can blow it up somehow... Some C3 ought to be enough to blow the entire hangar to smithereens. C3? You mean that cutting-edge plastic explosive? It could be molded into any shape. The bomb of the future. Where can I get it? There was some in the armory here, but it's gone now. It was stolen by a female spy, who was here a minute ago. Eva? No, that's not her name. Her name is Tatiana. She made her way in here by becoming Volkin's lover. I thought she was your lover. Mine? Oh no, she is Volkin's lover. This is my lover. Who are they? My wife and daughter. They're in America. Now I remember. Your family is in the custody of the CIA. How long has Tatiana been here? Only a few weeks. A few days before the virtuous mission then. She said that Khrushchev sent her. What did you just give her? All of the experimental data for the Shagohod. Please, it is essential that you destroy the Shagohod. I will, but first I've got to get you to safety. 
No. I'm not going. My mission is to rescue you. Leave me. Sokolov! Khrushchev has abandoned me. I cannot return to my country. I would most certainly be sent to the Gulags. What about the U.S.? Yes, I once thought of that. My family's waiting for me there. But even if I fled to the United States, I would once again find myself creating weapons of mass murder. In the end, it doesn't matter where I go. I am still a weapons scientist. To be honest with you, I'm tired. Every day I help create things that should never be used. Things that should never have existed in the first place. Every day, without sleep. Without a word of praise from others. And my creations do not even benefit mankind. They are merely the tools of politicians. All I wanted to do was build space rockets. But it was not to be. The space race between America and Russia became the prey of politicians. The space race and the arms race are one and the same. Missiles, rockets, what's the difference? Scientists are always being used. Please, watch over my family. Major, what are you doing here? I've been waiting for you in my room. <laughs> Who are you? Don't play dumb with me. If you think you can fool me, you're sorely mistaken. I know the Major better than anyone else. I come here looking for Tatiana, and what should I find? But a greasy freebooter. disguise it's gonna rub off on you and then you'll lose sight of who you really are stay out of this See why they call you the boss. What was that? Some kind of judo? No, it's called CQC, a basic form of close quarters combat. He and I developed it together. Splendid. I'll take it from here. Are you going to kill him? <sighs> of course. But first. I will make him pay for hurting Ivan. <laughs> Thank you. 
Kill me! Stop it! Who have you been talking to? He doesn't know what you're talking about. You'd better start talking. Please, stop this! Who is Khrushchev's lapdog? How can you do this to him? I know you gave the data to someone. Never do that. You! Now then, I hope you'll prove more entertaining than he was. But first, let's take a look at your body, shall we? What a beautiful body you have, like a newborn baby. <laughs> but not for long. Well then, Let's get started. What is your target? Is it the Shagohad? Or Sokolov? Or maybe it's the Legacy? Answer me! Who is helping you? Who let you in here? You're a tough one. But even you must have your limits. And I am a patient man. Here's where the fun really begins. Carries an electric charge of 10 million volts. Let's see how you like this. Now answer me. How much does the CIA know? They're after my legacy. Aren't they? Your real target is the Philosopher's Legacy, isn't it? Yes, yes. Let yourself go. That's what I want to see. It's no use. He's not going to talk. He's been trained not to break. Trained by me. <sighs> Admit it! We're after the location of the legacy! The secret fund established by the three great powers during the two world wars. That's what you're looking for, isn't it? One hundred billion dollars, divided up and hidden all over the world. And you're looking for a record of where all that money is hidden, right? No matter. Philosopher's legacy is safely in my possession, in the underground vault of Groznikrat. You'll never live. <laughs> what?
What's this? A transmitter? Who's responsible for this? I am. I planted it on him to keep track of his movements. Why? So the Cobras could ambush him. If they knew where he was gonna be, they wouldn't have gotten themselves slaughtered. It pains me to do this, boss, but under the circumstances... I'm afraid I must ask you to show me some proof that you and he were not in collusion. You don't trust me, is that it? Not that. But he is your apprentice. What do you want me to do? Let's see. Cut out his eyes. I don't like those blue eyes of his. There's nothing more important to a soldier than his eyes. You made him a soldier, and now you will unmake him. Yes, it'll make for a touching display. He's all yours. Do it! Ruin him, just as he did the Cobras. What is it, Tanya? He suffered enough. Well, well. Why are you protecting him? That smell. Tatiana, you're the spy. What are you talking about? I know that smell. Stop it! Taking a fancy tour, eh, Ocelot? No. I have no interest in this woman. I want to test her. I'll let this be the judge. Do as you like. There, satisfied now. Well, that was refreshing. <laughs> Come, we're going to my room. <sighs> so you survived the Colonel's torture, eh? Watching this has made me realize something. <laughs> it's really not that bad. It's the ultimate form of expression. <laughs> you got lucky this time, Tatiana. <laughs>
Run! I've prepared an escape route for us. Go out and head west. Pass underneath the connecting passageway and go north. You'll find an open manhole there. You're quiet. You Go idiot snake. Down into the sewers. The door at the north end of the sewers is unlocked. You can use it to get outside the fortress. I've got your equipment. We'll meet up later. Eva. But I can't get too close to your cell. You'll have to figure a way out of there yourself. <laughs> I'll be in touch. It's a long scene. We're finally back. And we finally get the fork. Press the square button to slash. Press firmly to stab. Animals and plants captured with this can be eaten on the spot. One of the best weapons in the game. Tiny! And we'll throw this back to Johnny. I guess we'll go for the Johnny cutscenes. Why not? Let's test out this fork. <laughs> Check out this fancy animation that it has as well. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah, this is what the boss shoots us with. Fake death pill. This is the bullet. And Ocelot, when he went up behind us, he lodged this transmitter in our back. Uh, we can take both of these out now. And I think I will remove the fake death pill. But we're going to leave the transmitter there. Because if we do, we get an extra super secret cutscene later on. And it also makes the waterfall section of the game more challenging. If we leave the transmitter in, we have to deal with the ocelot unit at the waterfall. If we remove it now, we won't have to deal with anyone. It'll just be a relaxing stroll through that area. And, um, yeah, we're not doing an in-depth playthrough right now, but I guess we'll, we'll get the Johnny cutscene. We just have to throw his, we just have to throw the food back to him two more times. Fuck around with a single action army. Chow time! <laughs> that would be a good profile picture. A 
Ocelot. Ooh, can you do this, Ocelot? I don't think so. Hey, hey, eat up! Huh? Well, it's your loss. Hey, you're not such a bad guy after all. I, uh, I guess not all Americans are dogs. You mean it? Yeah. You know, before the war started, I used to live in America. I even had a, a wife and a kid. You must be pretty lonely. Yeah, I am pretty lonely. Really lonely. What's your kid's name? Johnny. Johnny. Nice ring to it. Really? You like it? Well, if you say so, I'll believe you. Actually, my name is Johnny, too. All the firstborn sons in my family are called Johnny. My dad's a Johnny, and my son's son will probably be a Johnny, too. The whole clan of Johnnies. Why do we have a Cold War anyway? Our two countries used to be such good friends. Yeah, I hear ya. <sighs> I just want to see my family again. Must be rough. Yeah. Not as rough as you have it, though. Here. I filched them from your equipment when the colonel wasn't looking. It's uh, the least I can do. Well? Don't suppose you could let me out of here. Huh? Well, I can't do that. Hey, don't you go getting any funny ideas. If you try to escape, I'll have to shoot you. I've said too much. <laughs> I gotta go. Aww. He's so adorable. <gasps> So he thinks he's giving us our cigarettes back, but he's actually just giving us our SIG spray weapon back. <laughs> I love that. You have to stay all the way back here as well. If you go under the bed but you're up here, that won't trigger. He'll see you straight away. <clears throat> We could use the SIG spray. Another cool thing you can do here as well. If he sees this. We spin around. Um, what's wrong? Are you okay? Oh, jeez. Did you throw up? Yeah, I'm sorry. Think you could do something about this? 
<laughs> Grab his stun grenades or his smoke grenades. Did you manage to escape? Yeah, I'm out. Be careful. In your present state, you're practically naked. You don't have a single decent weapon and you'll never survive in a battle. Take some time and pull yourself together. Eva says she's recovered your equipment, so rendezvous with her as soon as possible to get your gear back. Use the escape route Eva set up for you. Go down into the sewers through the manhole in the northwest section of Groznygrad. Start out by exiting the holding cells and heading northwest. All right. I, he doesn't give you anything if you don't pick up the Sig Spray, I think, anyway. It's been a long time since I've seen that version of the scene. But yeah, I don't think he gives you anything. I, oh, shit! Fuck. Go back to sleep. Yeah, for some reason, he doesn't stay asleep for long. See, look, he only is one star. When you knock him out as well. Uh, was there another rat in there? I wouldn't mind another munch. There we go. <laughs> cool game. I'm not going to kill poor Johnny. Uh, I really do want his smoke grenades, though. These smoke grenades will be crucial to how we get out of here. You can kill Johnny. Doesn't cause a time paradox or anything. He's Johnny's grandfather, not his father. We're going back to the old school camera for this part. <laughs> Little Johnny isn't already alive, but um, his father is. Oh. Nice. Badam. They look blinder than they uh, than they are. It's because of the smoke effect. The smoke is all messed up in the HD collection. Those should be like really big, thick clouds of smoke that hang around for many, many seconds. But on the HD collection, it's all fucked up. Snake, you're already in the sewers? Eva, yeah, I just got down here. Mm. I'm coming to meet you now. The door at the north end is open, right? Uh, Snake? Let me guess. There's a problem. Yeah. What is it this time? The Colonel found out you escaped. He did, huh? I figured as much. Yeah, and now all of Grozny Grad is on red alert. Just my luck. But once I'm out of the fortress... You can't get out. I can't? When the fortress went on red alert, they sealed off the sewers. You've got to be kidding me. I'm serious. And that means the escape route I laid out is... Is sealed off, too. Right. And they just sent a unit out looking for you. Down here? Uh-huh. They'll be there any minute now. You've got to get out quick. But isn't the exit sealed off? You should be able to get out by heading straight north. Book it, Snake. If they find you, you're dead. Uh, Zamacor, thank you very much for the 19 months. I, I would eat one of the dogs if I could, but unfortunately you can't. Um, Sax, I would... Assume they weren't allowed to add it. Um, I, I think Bad Humans was posting about that a while back. Said something about it, or something that the developers said about it. 
but um you know the the the, the nightmare sequence was like an early early build for a a, a hack and slash game they were going to make called guy savage so maybe it had to do with the uh, like the rights for that game or like something like that i don't know I've been waiting for this. Nobody interfere. Their voices. 
faces may fall upon deaf ears, but make no mistake. The dead are not silent. Now you will know the sorrow of those whose lives you have ended. We go. We're in, we're not gonna have too many ghosts here. I don't think we killed like two or three guards. I just want to see Rykov. I think those might be the only two guys. Oh wait, no, we shot a few as well, didn't we? Is that you? There is a rare line, you don't always get that. He has a few lines that you won't always hear. That's one of them. They're not like super rare, but it could take a few playthroughs before you hear all of them. Wait a second, she doesn't have a reaction if you actually do save, does she? That would be cool. You know, she's like, wait, how... How is the progress being saved? Snake, answer me! I'm gonna have to test this. I'm, I'm almost sure she has nothing else to say if you do actually save, but... Just to test it. I had no idea how to do this in my first playthrough. I had to look it up. Being very aggressive. Ah! 
There it is. Hear that? That was weird. Is that always the thing? Who is that? Where's Rykov? Did anyone spot Rykov? He didn't show up. Oh, I didn't notice him. Well, I'm not doing it again. How did I miss him? There's the same skeleton from the start of the game. Snake, are you all right? That was a close call. What the hell happened to me? You were halfway drowned at the bottom of the river. Almost crossed over to the other side. Other side? So that really was... Something on your mind, Snake? Major, was there a man in the Cobra unit called the Sorrow? Yes, I've heard of him. He was an uncanny soldier who fought alongside the boss. What kind of man was he? The Sorrow was a man with... Well, special powers. He had ESP, which was the subject of extensive research in the Soviet Union at the time. He was especially gifted as a medium. A medium? 
Someone who can communicate with the spirit world and evoke the spirits of the dead. In other words, he could talk to ghosts. They say he could find out what was going on in a battle by talking to dead soldiers. What about him and the boss? What was the story between them? I don't know the details. Why don't we ask Sigin? Yo, I finished checking up on this Sorrow guy a while ago. Thought you guys already knew, though. Knew what? That he's dead. He's been dead for two years now. Died two years ago? At Salino Yarsk. You know, those cliffs you were at. And the boss is the one who did him in. The boss? Yep. Two years ago, the boss was sent by the CIA on a secret mission to Salino Yarsk. That's when she met the Sorrow, who'd gone back to the Soviet Union after the Cobras broke up at the end of the war. Except this time, they were enemies. And then what? The boss killed the Sorrow herself and accomplished her mission. At least, that's what the records say. So, he was never there in the first place. He just couldn't let go of the boss. You okay, Snake? Yeah, I'm fine. It looks like it's not time for me to die yet. I sure hope not. Otherwise, the whole mission is shot. We're counting on you, pal. Roger that. Eva? Snake, you didn't call. I was worried. Are you all right? Yeah. I took a pretty freaky detour. What are you talking about? Nothing. Forget it. Let's just say I'm back. Good. But how did you escape from the sewers? I jumped into the river. From all the way up there? You're out of control. Yeah. I got carried away by the current and almost drowned. Great. That's perfect. What do you mean, that's perfect? I mean, if you ended up in the river, then I know a good spot nearby. Let's meet up there. Where is it? Keep going upstream until you get to a waterfall. A waterfall, huh? Right. Behind that waterfall, there's a cave. We'll meet in there. The cave behind the waterfall upstream. Got it. See you there. Mm. Let's do it. We have the uh, transmitter lodged, so... Like I was explaining earlier, we have to deal with the Ocelot unit here. If you remove the transmitter before this point, it's just a nice and peaceful area. You can just stroll through. Look at how pretty this area is. Something about how the light and the trees look here. The color. So nice. All the butterflies. Wait for this guy to turn. He takes a while. There we go. Knock him out. One of my favorite little strats to do here. Check out the range on these guys, their vision. I'm just going to stand here to bait this guy over. Here he comes. And he notices me. Minus 10% camo. And now he's going to go all the way over to that point. Which will free up space for me. Bum, bum. Bum, bum. Bum, bum. Let's wait for this guy to move back. There we go.
Nice to meet you, Snake. I'm Tatiana. Here's your equipment. Eva, you could use a towel. So could you. Want some? No, thanks. <clears throat> Don't like snakes? Not for dinner. Mm. Didn't you have to eat them at the KGB? In my training, we always got the good stuff. French, Italian, that kind of thing. A regular Matahari. The least you could do is call me Cynthia. Tell me something. How does it feel to spy on your own country? I can't say it feels good, but it's my job. Can't even eat a snake during a mission, huh? I wouldn't mind eating you. When this mission's over, you'll have to treat me to a nice dinner. What do you want to eat? Let's see. How about sushi? Sushi? It's Japanese. I hear it's all the rage right now. Supposedly, it's made from raw fish. Raw fish? Just the place for my survival techniques. <laughs> Thank you, Snake. I'll be your eyes from now on. I'm searching and I'm melting to you. What a fear in my heart. But you're so supreme. Thank you. Don't worry about it. Are you all right? It's not like I can't see. I've got one good eye and can still fire a gun. Really? Good. Snake, come here for a minute. There's something in here. It's so hard. Oh. When did it get like that? Hold still. Let me do it. You know, I've been trained to do this kind of thing myself. Just relax and let me handle it. Okay. I can't believe how smart it is. Yeah, but it gets the job done. Really? Here, lift up your hips. <laughs> like this? Yeah. How's that? You're pretty good at that. Yeah, everybody tells me that. Hold oh, steady, I'm not done yet. There, a transmitter. Uh, is that how they do it in the KGB? Sometimes. Would you rather I did it American style? <laughs> But how'd you know there was a transmitter lodged there? That's some female intuition you've got.
Eva, didn't you steal some explosives out of the fortress? C3, a highly potent explosive from the West. It can be molded into any shape, like clay. With just this much, you could blow up the Shagohat and the lab along with it. Is that right? Yeah, but there's a trick to using it. Tell me about it. Well, what do you think? The Shagohod's booster unit uses liquid fuel. The fuel tanks are in the main wing of the weapons lab in the hangar housing the Shagohod itself. So I should blow up the tanks? That's the basic idea. It should be enough to blow up the entire hangar. There are four fuel tanks. In order to destroy the hangar, you'll have to set explosives on each of those tanks. All four of them? It should be no sweat for you. Besides, the scientists had the day off today. So the hangar's completely deserted. Not quite. They've still got guards posted there. So what do I do after I set the C3? The bombs run off a timer. Once the timer has been set, the countdown will begin. When the timer reaches zero, the bombs will all go off at once. How long do I have? 20 minutes. Once the phase two trials are finished, I wouldn't be surprised if they kill all the scientists to prevent them from talking. So you've got to act fast. I'll take care of it. Eva, did you get the data on the Shagohod from Sokolov? Yeah, that's the mission I was given. By Khrushchev? Mm-hmm. America doesn't have any use for it, does it? Huh. But I haven't forgotten my other mission either. Helping you out. <laughs> Follow this cave and go up the ladder at the end. You'll come out inside Groznygrad, just southwest of the weapons lab. Do you remember when you went to rescue Sokolov? Remember there was a locked door when you entered the main wing from the second floor of the east wing? Yeah. That's the entrance to the Shagohad's hangar. Use this key to open that door. The door right when I entered the main wing? Got it. What about you? I'll get things ready for our escape. There's a rail bridge to the north. I'm gonna set a bomb there, so I'm taking half of the C3 with me. Right. I'll set off the weapons lab then. Try not to be in the neighborhood when it happens. Gotcha. And watch out for Ocelot. He suspects you're not who you say you are. Don't worry. The Colonel still trusts me. And I have my ways. There's not a man alive who can resist my charms. Uh, Besides you, of course. I'm just warning you, Eva. That's all. I know. Okay, let's go. You seem like you were born on one of those. <laughs> if I didn't ride every day, I couldn't go on living. Huh? When I'm riding, the wind hits me so hard that it hurts. That pain keeps my mind off the pain of having to be someone else. It's not easy always fooling myself like this. It's only when I'm on the bike that I'm free to be the real me. I only get off my bike when I fall in love or fall dead. What's your name? Tatiana. No. Your real name. <laughs> What's wrong with Tanya? Uh, okay, Tanya. Don't let anyone see you. Huh? Oh, this? It's a button camera. What did you do that for? Insurance. To make sure you don't double-cross me.
Hey. Dave. If you're there and not blowing your nose, thank you very much for the raid. And uh, welcome anyone who's coming in from Dave's stream. How's it going? What's up, Pew? Good to see you. Welcome on in. Uh, I'll grab some glow caps, I guess. Why not? And up here, we can get a cardboard box, which will instantly transport us to the main hangar of Grozny Grad. And, uh, hold on, we want to, we have to do something super special here. <laughs> oh shit, hold on. Okay, that's enough. I'm pretty sure you can do that in the original as well. You can do it at any door as well. It's not just exclusive to that door. See, if he didn't puke like that, he would have fucked up the perfect timing. Uh, let me rearrange my setup here. Uh, I don't need the M19. I don't need the fork. I'll take the AK. Actually, nah, M60. The Mosin. Stun grenade. C3. Seems good. Uh, thermals, cardboard box B. Okay, we're gonna bypass these guys. And we're gonna take the shortcut. Oh! No, you don't see anything. He's coming, but I'm going to be too far away from him. Yeah.
Snake, I see you've managed to sneak into the hangar. Yeah, the Shagahod's in here. The completed Phase II Shagahod represents a grave threat to the West. We can't allow it to be mass-produced. You've got to destroy it. Eva's got the data on the Shagahod. Do you think that's safe? Well, I wouldn't exactly say it's safe, but Khrushchev is a shrewd leader. I can't imagine he'd use it for anything other than deterrence. Volgin, however, is a different story. He's planning to use the Shagahod to turn the Cold War into a blazing hot one. We can't let him have it. Agreed. That leaves just one more mission for you to carry out. The boss. Exactly. Uh. For now, just focus on destroying the Shagahod. Yes, sir. I'll let Sigint fill you in on how to destroy it. Yo! Like Eva was saying, if you're looking to blow the whole place sky high, the best way is to take out those liquid fuel tanks with the C3. You know there's four tanks in there, right? You have to put C3 on all four of them. To plan a C3 charge, all you gotta do is equip the C3 and press the weapon button while standing in front of a tank. Just like TNT. But uh, make sure you don't plant it in the wrong place. You barely got enough C3 as it is, right? Good point. I'll make sure not to plant it anywhere else. Good, man. And be careful. Liquid fuel has a nasty habit of going off at the slightest shot. So don't go using any heavy firepower near the tanks unless you're aiming to get yourself barbecued. I'll keep that in mind. The C3 charges all have to go off at once if you want to bring down the hangar in one fell swoop. So if I were you, I'd wait until after you plant the last charge to start the timer mechanism. All right. I'll make sure I finish planting all four charges before I start the timer. Once the timer's set, you've got 20 minutes until it explodes, right? So make sure you get your ass out of that place by then. I think that's about all I've got. The rest is up to you. Good luck, pal. We're counting on you, Snake. All right, let's do it. Let's get a quick body shot on that guy. And back into the box. This guy might see me in the box up here. Yeah. But he's just amazed and perplexed. <laughs> the ultimate tool against the scientists. Uh, go. Snake? Eva. I finished planting the bomb on the rail bridge. If we get rid of the bridge, the enemy won't be able to follow us. That should at least buy us some time. I've also set up the escape route. How are things going on your end? I just finished planting the second charge. Give me a little more time. Okay. I'll be waiting for you at the bridge. Solace, I am not going to be playing MGS4 right after this. Maybe I'll do it in the coming days, though. We'll see. But, uh... No, the stream will be ending once I finish MGS3 today. I should have ran straight out. I would have timed it. Wait for his head to turn. There we go. Gotcha this time. <laughs> Major, 
I finished planting the C3. I'm on my way out now. Hurry, Snake. Is Eva taking care of the escape route? Yeah. Are you sure? She can handle it. All right, then. We'll hurry up and get out of there. Snake! Why'd you come back? This woman was found snooping around my underground vault. When she was captured, look what we found on her. The Philosopher's Legacy. This microfilm contains all the information regarding the Legacy. You might say that this film itself is the Philosopher's Legacy. It was the smell that gave her away. No, not the perfume. It was gasoline. Motorcycle gasoline. She reeked of it. To think that lovely Tatiana was a spy. We found this radio along with her too. Such a fine woman she was. It almost pains me to have to kill her. <laughs> yes, she was an obedient one. She was my precious little pet. Isn't that right? What was that? Do you have something to say to me? Go to hell! You dirty whore. I've had enough. Kisses from you. I should have known. Sokolov wasn't man enough to have a lover like that. Just like the KGB to send something so beautiful, yet so deadly. What is the Philosopher's legacy? Very well. I'll explain it before I kill you. During the last Great War, the most powerful men in America, China, and the Soviet Union had a secret pact. The pact was a blueprint for defeating the Axis powers and creating a new world order. To secure victory in the war, the three countries pooled their resources to conduct the most covert types of operations and research. The atomic bomb, rocket technology, the Cobra unit. And they amassed an enormous sum of money to fund these projects. Enough to fight the war five times over. 
That wealth is the philosopher's legacy. After the war was won, the three countries were to divide the philosopher's legacy amongst themselves. This explains why the United States and the Soviet Union were able to steal away the best scientific minds in Germany as soon as the war ended. But our great motherland has far surpassed its pathetic rivals. We possess enormous wealth, the most advanced technology, and overwhelming power, assets fitting of our great country. My father was one of the men in charge of managing the philosopher's legacy. In the confusion that ensued after the war ended, he devised a series of ingenious plots to ensure that the Soviet Union would have total control over the legacy. The money was divided up and laundered through banks all over the world. Switzerland, Australia, and Hong Kong. This microfilm contains a record of all those transactions. After my father's death, I learned of this secret and obtained the microfilm. With this money and the support of Brezhnev and his allies, I built this fortress of Groznygrad and Granin's research facility. But that worthless fool Granin failed to produce results I was forced to turn to Khrushchev's dog Sokolov and his invention, the Shagohod. My position in Gru made it too troublesome to attack Sokolov's facility directly. But the spy network established by the secret pact still existed. I used it to contact the boss and suggested that she defect. The boss was conniving enough to see things my way. The world was once one, but the conflict between the philosophers has torn it in two. We will use the legacy to heal that rift and make the world whole again. To do this, we need strength, an unstoppable trump card with enough power to bring order to the world. That trump card was to be the Shagohod and the Cobra Union. I have lost the Cobras, but I still have the Shagohod and the Legacy. There is nothing America can do to stop us. Boss, take this someplace safe. Take good care of it. He wouldn't have come waltzing back in here unless he had a reason. The C-3's been stolen. He must be planning some sort of sabotage. I'll go see if there are any surprises waiting for us. I'll dispose of her as well. everything to me. Fight like a warrior, Volgan. But of course. Let me face him. I've been waiting for this moment. Time to get even! Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah! Uh. No more judo, and no more field strips.
Enough of this. He's mine. You will stand right there and watch. Got it? Please, Colonel, let me- Silence! Sorry for the delay. Let's get started, shall we? we go let's do it salami thank you for the 53 months cheers uh actually hold on give me a second volgan <laughs> what the fuck That was a bit late. <laughs> Look at his animation here. He's like a big baby. Sit down. Here it comes. Oh, he didn't scream at me yet. Hold on. There we go. Ah, I was hoping he would. He has a couple of lines there. A couple of variations on that dialogue. One of which is just a hilarious scream, but it seems to be kind of rare. Uh, let's get rid of the mask now. We don't need it. Got to unequip your weapon or the electricity will be drawn towards it. Oh! Jesus. Oops. 
fighter you are! Crazy damage. Fire on the lock. I said shoot him! Sorry, Colonel. I'm afraid I can't do that. What do you mean you can't? I made a promise to the boss. Silence! I am your commanding officer. <laughs> Questioning my authority? Fight like a man, Volgin. Volgin? Emergency. Explosives have been detected. All non-EOD personnel must evacuate immediately. Ocelot! Find those bombs! Repeat. Explosives have been detected. All non-EOD personnel must evacuate immediately. Move it! Huh. For some more snakes. Round two. Let's do it. Uh, Man Solo as well. Thank you very much for the prime sub. Cheers. Here we go. Whoa. Okay. Whoa. Fancy combos. Let's. I did get a Russian glow cap, didn't I? Yeah, fuck it. Let's throw it. Just for the hell of it. There we go. <laughs> Absorbs all the electricity. Bam, bam. Oh. oh, embarrassing. You gonna take that?
you later. Right now we've got to get to the lake and escape. We can't leave yet. I've still got one last job to do. The boss is already at the lake. Huh? She's at the lake. She's waiting for you there. Waiting for me? I was hoping I wouldn't have to tell you. I don't want you to fight her. But I... I've come to realize that there's a special relationship between you two. Something I can't understand. Something that goes beyond a man and a woman. I envy you. Really, I do. But I guess I just can't understand it. She asked me to tell you something. I've never seen someone with such clear eyes. There. I said it. Ready to go? Yeah. Let's do it. Let's get that M60 out. Uh, hold on, let's change the camera. There we go, perfect. Uh, make sure I have all the right weapons. We can unequip that C3. The RPG, there we go.
Bien. Here we go, part two of the never-ending bike chase. Oh, Jesus! That guy had an RPG.
Look what. That looked pretty funny the way he fell off there. That was unusual. Part three. <laughs> I love how the volume of his voice is relative to how close the camera is. I'm there just about. Go again, part four.
I usually don't even try and deal damage there anymore because it kind of fucks with my hands a bit. I think it's possible to deal like three quarters of his health there throughout the whole bike chase. Over half anyway, I think. Maybe like two thirds. No point. Oh no, there is a point. It, it it affects the boss fight with him later on. He'll have that amount drained from his health when we get to the actual boss fight with him. I planted four C3 charges. Up. Three more but uh bosses. usually I don't even try. It's kind of sore on my hands Two to do it. Left. I used to do it Down. way more.
take care of the driving. Yeah? Yeah, I trust you. On one condition, though, leave the fighting to me. You got it. I was getting tired of running away anyway. Eva. Let's do it. For luck. There we go. Moomba, thank you very much for the eight months, by the way. Cheers. Okay, Eva, behave yourself, please. Bow da ba down. Ah. Please stop moving. Thank you. Beautiful. Oh, Eva, why did you stop? Okay. Not much to this fight, in case you didn't know. Shoot the trades, shoot the backs, just keep spamming rockets everywhere. the other way. Ah! One more. One more.
Before we attack him, we just have to stop and take all this in. Look at this shit show. <laughs> like a Looney Tunes cartoon. Oh, Volgan. That was terrible. Even if he does hit her, look at that health regen that she has. Crazy. <laughs> Alright, let's do this. Ooh, will I be able to get him? Yeah, he's looking at me. There we go, now I have his attention. Oh! I was doing the moonwalk, Eva, come on. Oh shit! I break. Add I break for the first hit. That's enough fun. Oh my god, that has to be a record for the amount of times I've been hit by Eva in that phase. Jesus. That was like five times in total.
no time for this now. The escape craft is just up ahead. Thought the bike chase was over? Let's get going. It's just getting started. Here we go, part five. Ah, uh, stun grenades. Nice. Now I just get to relax. There they are. Ooh, one of them got away. Yeah, that's what happens if they get you with a rocket launcher there. I've had that happen before. These have to hit. It's not over yet. If it ended there, it wouldn't be too bad. Once you get to this stream, it really starts to drag. Ooh. 
Whoa, Jesus! What the fuck was that? Is the camera always that shaky there? Whoa, Jesus, and again. Okay, I don't remember the camera being so shaky here. <laughs> hey, what's up, JMP? I'm not sure what the plan is for the YouTube channel yet. Uh, but, like, clips from the games, compilations from the streams. Um, we'll see. I I'm going to have a secondary channel for archiving all my streams as well. Maybe not all of them, but a lot of them. And I should have a link for that soon enough. Starting with Elden Ring? No, it'll have, well, the Archive channel will have all my, or most of my collections from Twitch on it. So, you know, all the, all the playthroughs that I've done over the years. All right, we did it, finally. Looks like they finally gave up. Don't start celebrating yet. We're leaking fuel. Damn it. Tank shot up. Crap. is waiting for you. You have to go. Give me a gun. No, we're getting out of here. If we're still far away from the lake, I'll never make it. I can't believe this. Uh-huh. I never thought I'd see you act this week. What do you mean? Listen to me, Eva. We're doing this together. No, you... Eva, I need you. Say that one more time. I need you. I can't fly the wig by myself. <laughs> All right, then. I guess I'd better help you out. <laughs> Oh. 
You're lucky to have me. No. Snake, can you hear me? Paramedic. Thank God. Eva's been seriously hurt. So have you. Luckily, I think her organs are all intact, but... Calm down, Snake. Calm down? You'll both be fine as long as you get the proper emergency treatment. But you're the only one who can do this. Understand? So you've got to calm down. Right. Okay. Okay. Now let's open up the survival viewer and treat the injury. Do you have supplies with you? I'm running kind of short. Then by switching the survival viewer over to Eva, you can treat her wounds too. Now get to work. Oh, and Snake, I'm pretty sure you know this already. But if you don't have enough supplies for the both of you, your wounds come first. Huh? Do you get my meaning, Snake? You've still got a mission to complete. Yeah, I know what I have to do. Snake? Like this. Like this. All right, let's do it. Running kind of low, apparently. Doesn't look like it. Oh, wow. Right, and that's enough to go to the next scene. You don't even need to do yours. Okay. Can you walk? Yeah, I think so. Here. It's different from the Mauser. When you're using a two-hand grip, you have to be careful where you put your hands or your fingers will get burned by the exhaust gas from the cylinder gap. I think the game automatically gives you a refill there anyway. Which is weird, given the dialogue, but I think that's Snake, are you how it all right? goes. I've been better. What about Eva? I healed her up. She can manage. Good. Snake, you'll take the lead and break through the enemy's line of defense. Eva will ordinarily be following behind you. If you lie on your belly, she'll lie down as well. If you slip and fall off a cliff, she'll follow right behind. You can call out to Eva by pressing the action button. Head to the lake along with Eva. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> the game is hard coded to refill your healing items there. Yeah, I I, I always um I wondered if it was the same on PS2, but I think it is. But yeah, it's weird given the dialogue there, obviously. I think it is the same on PS2. Okay, we're going to treat Eva with respect this time, and we're just going to move on to the next screen. Yeah, even though she ran me over five times. That's how nice I am. 
Hey, what's up, Rudy? I'm playing on a PS3, Foros. Alright, let's go. This first section isn't too bad. You can just go straight to the exit. As long as you get her to follow you straight away. Yeah, like, I can understand the game giving you a certain amount if you're, like, completely empty. You know, fair enough. They can't soft block you. But automatically refilling it up to full just seems weird. Given what the scene implies. Yeah, it's, but it's not like you needed a full kit in order to avoid soft blocking. That's the thing. You only need a few. Although I guess you could miss... I guess you could fuck it up. You know, where you place the bandages and everything. <laughs> Even still, though. That's, re that's room for a lot of fuck-ups they're giving you there. Yeah, no, you couldn't even force yourself to run out, even if you had half the amount. I don't think, anyway. Um, I'm going to change my camo here. Let's go to regular black. Nice. Nice. Ow. Ah! Fuck, I knew I was premature with that. Ah, fuck, man. Those were such nice shots up until that point, but I just had to be greedy. Should have taken my time. Okay, let's do it again. This time we'll do it faster and even better to make up for it. That was almost really nice. Fuck you. There um, you go, Eva. Can I have seconds? I don't know. Come on, Eva, let's go, let's go. I'm waiting for Eva. I don't want to go too far ahead. Fuck off. The enemy's here. Nice. Okay, let's try and get the guy on the ground here just by looking at his breath. See, there's one guy in the bushes there and you can see his breath every few seconds. There it is. 
So if your breath is there, your head oh. must be there. Okay, that'll do. I think that's everyone. Come on, Snake. We made it. We made it. Over there. It's the boss, isn't it? I'll go get the wig ready to take off. Right. I'll leave you two alone, but come back in one piece, okay? Promise me! Life's end. Isn't it beautiful? It's almost tragic. When life ends, it gives off a final lingering aroma. Light is but a farewell gift from the darkness to those on their way to die. I've been waiting, Snake, for a long time. Waiting for your birth, your growth, and the finality of today. Boss, why are you doing this? Why? To make the world one again. The world used to be whole. But with the end of the Second World War, the philosophers began to fight amongst themselves, and the world was torn apart. The Cobras, my comrades, who trained and fought alongside me, were torn apart as well. The foibles of politics and the march of time can turn friends into enemies just as easily as the wind changes. Ridiculous, isn't it? Yesterday's ally becomes today's opposition. And this Cold War? Think back. When I was leading the Cobras, America and Russia were fighting together. Now, consider whether America and Russia will still be enemies in the 21st century. Somehow, I doubt it. Enemies change along with the times, the flow of the ages, and we soldiers are forced to play along. 
I didn't raise you and shape you into the man you are today, just so we could face each other in battle. A soldier's skills aren't meant to be used to hurt friends. So then what is an enemy? Is there such a thing as an absolute timeless enemy? There is no such thing, and never has been. And the reason is that our enemies are human beings like us. They can only be our enemies in relative terms. The world must be made whole again. The philosophers must be reunited. I will devote my skills to that purpose. And with the Colonel's money, I will achieve that end. Just as I once created the Cobras. They are my family. I may no longer be able to bear children, but I still have a family. It was November 1st, 1951. I was in the Nevada desert participating in atomic testing. The name Nevada is derived from Spanish, covered in snow, white as snow. And snow is exactly what I saw in that Nevada desert. It froze my blood white. Snake, you were an atomic test subject, weren't you? On Bikini Atoll. That's part of the reason I was drawn to you. You and I are alike. We're both slowly being eaten away by the karma of others. We'll never have the chance to die peacefully of old age. We have no tomorrow. But we can still have hope for the future. In 1960, I saw a vision of the ideal future from space. Three years earlier, the Soviet Union had succeeded in launching Sputnik, the first man-made satellite in history, into orbit. This came as a huge shock to the United States. In response, America threw everything it had into its own manned spaceflight project, the Mercury program. Even as the Soviets seemed poised to send their first man into space, America was still experimenting with chimpanzees and rockets. The government wanted human data. So they secretly decided to send a human being into space. I was the one they chose. At the time, they didn't have the technology to block out cosmic rays, and whoever they sent up would inevitably be exposed to heavy radiation. That's why they chose me. After all, I'd already been irradiated once. Of course, you won't find any of this in the history books. I could see the planet as it appeared from space. That's when it finally hit me. Space exploration is nothing but another game in the power struggle between the U.S. and the USSR. Politics, economics, the arms race, they're all just arenas for meaningless competition. I'm sure you can see that, but the Earth itself has no boundaries. No East, no West, no Cold War. And the irony of it is, the United States and the Soviet Union are spending billions on their space programs and the missile race, only to arrive at the same conclusion. In the 21st century, everyone will be able to see that we are all just inhabitants of a little celestial body called Earth. A world without communism or capitalism, that is the world I wanted to see. But reality continued to betray me. In 1961, I was sent to Cuba, to Bahia de Cochinos. It was part of a CIA-sponsored invasion under the guise of taking Cuban exiles back to their country. But the U.S. government betrayed them. Our weak-kneed president held back their air support. Defenseless, the exiles were annihilated by the Cuban army. 
All I could do was watch in silence. I was set up by the very country I'd sacrificed so much for, by the very government I dedicated my life to defending. I was driven from the surface world, and I went underground. Then, two years ago, I faced the sorrow, my old comrade in battle. He was my friend. But one of us had to die. I was left with no choice. The sorrow gave his life for me. There is no enmity between us. One must live, and one must die. That was the mission. The ones who gave me that mission were the philosophers. Early in the 20th century, the true holders of power in the United States, the Republic of China, and the newly formed Soviet Union, gathered together in a secret meeting that would later be known as the Wiseman's Committee. The secret pact they formed there marked the beginning of the philosophers. But the last of the original members died in the 1930s. After that, the organization began to run out of control, and the Wiseman's Committee degenerated into a mere shell of its former self. The philosophers of today have no sense of good or evil. Their influence extends to countries and organizations involved in every aspect of every war. They have become war itself. That's how they operate. The sacrifices of war cause a shift in the times. This shift leads to renewed conflict and in turn triggers the next war. Like a nuclear chain reaction, each conflict sparks countless others, forming an endless spiral that will continue on for eternity. Do you understand what I'm saying, Snake? By consuming me and you, the philosophers intend to keep that cycle going forever. It was my father who explained all of this to me. He was one of them. You see, I am the last remaining child of the philosophers. But after he revealed the truth, my father was killed by that same shapeless, formless organization. And my father isn't the only thing the philosophers have taken from me. In June of 1944, the Cobras and I took part in the landing at Normandy. We'd been given a top-secret mission to locate and destroy enemy V-2 rocket installations. I was pregnant at the time. The sorrow was the father. I gave birth on the field of battle. A beautiful baby boy. But my child was snatched away from me by the philosophers. Look at this scar. This is proof that I was once a mother. I gave up my body and my child for my country. There is nothing left inside me now. Nothing at all. No hatred, not even regret. And yet sometimes at night, I can still feel the pain creeping up inside me, slithering through my body like a snake. I've never talked this much about myself before. Thanks. Thanks for listening to me. I feel content. Snake. Commence the operation. I raised you. I loved you. I've given you weapons, taught you techniques, endowed you with knowledge. There is nothing more for me to give you. All that's left for you to take is my life, by your own hand. One must die, and one must live. No victory, no defeat. 
The survivor will carry on the fight. It is our destiny. The one who survives will inherit the title of boss. And the one who inherits the title of boss will face an existence of endless battle. I'll give you ten minutes. In ten minutes, Migs will come and bomb the hell out of this place. If you can beat me in less than ten minutes, you'll be able to escape in time. Let's make this the greatest ten minutes of our lives, Jack. Boss! You're a soldier. Finish your mission. Prove your loyalty. Face me. Here we go. So what are we gonna Let's do, see chat? What you're made of. Are we gonna finish it quick? Or do you wanna hear the song? <clears throat> Will we drag it out? Time to play rough. <laughs> Move or you're dead. All right, we'll drag it out. Look who it is. A mysterious white snake. Solidus. Love the petals falling on the camera. Come out and fight.
you hide it? What's that? He's gone. <laughs> oh! Uh. Nope. Too quick for you. Excellent, Jack. Let's see what you're made of. You're better than I remember. Frames fucked me up I'm there. Ooh. Give me back my Patriot. There he is. Here I come. What? <sighs> I don't believe it. Something, uh, there's a glitch. There's a glitch in the system. I countered that. Let's see what you're made of. Is it something to do with the Patriot? You bitch. Maybe I'm just gonna have to take this L. I don't know if I have it in me. Are we gonna drag it out one more time? What do you guys think? We have to wait five minutes. Drag it out. Okay, one more attempt to drag it out. I'll see if I can redeem myself. That was fucking terrible, man. I don't know what happened. Felt like I was doing it at the right time. The first fuck up I understood. Because the, like, the frame rate went all over the place. That second one though. Felt like that was correct. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab the snakes again.
Where are you hiding? <laughs> it looks like you know where I'm hiding. Such a fun fight. Oh. Brace yourself. Here we go. You've gotten stronger. For real this time. Yeah. <laughs> 
Okay, I give it up. <laughs> this is the end. <laughs> hey. At least we got to hear the whole song, right? Oh my god. I can't I can't even be mad at that actually. That that was just perfect. Did I fail a single counter for the whole thing? It must have fucked with my head or something that would that it was the last one. I didn't feel any pressure. I was just doing it the way I always do it. <laughs> That was premature. I should have been able to break out of it as well, but for some reason I've been having trouble breaking out of it. I broke out of that one. I think it was because I wasn't expecting it. Oh my god. Well, at least she got a good victory. Excellent, Jack. Alright. No fun and games this time. Ah, fuck, man, it was so close. Yeah, come on. I don't have all day. Oh, terrible, man. You're better than I remember. Pull the trigger. Here I come. Came in at the wrong angle. Is she going to beat me three times in a row? No way. No fucking way. Come at me. I dare you. Let's see what you're made of. Take this.
keep it safe. There's only room for one boss and one snake. Ready to go, Snake? Are you okay? I told you you could trust me.
Snake, try to remember some of the basics of CQC. up a few new moves. Huh. It doesn't feel right to shoot an unarmed man. But I'll get over it. Eva! What do you say to one last showdown? Yeah, all right. What's your name? Snake. No. Not that name. You're not a snake, and I'm not an ocelot. We're men with names. My name is Adamska. What's yours? John. Very well, John. Plain name, but I won't forget it. Come on! Pick one up already! Have you lost your nerve? What are you doing? Pick one up already! Pick one! Have you lost your nerve? What are you doing? Pick one up already! Pick one! Have you lost your nerve?
<laughs> it's a blank. <laughs> oh, that was fun. Till we meet again, John. Well done, Snake. The MiG's disengaged. Most likely under orders from Khrushchev. Is this his way of helping us? Who knows? Maybe he didn't want things to get messier than they already are. Or maybe he just wanted us to owe him one. The important thing is, you made it out alive. As long as Khrushchev is with us, I don't think they'll be coming after you. It should be smooth sailing all the way to Alaska. I'm sending someone out to Galena Base to meet you. To meet me? The DCI and the President himself are waiting at Langley. Don't keep them waiting.
So what are you going to do now? Go back to the KGB? What do you want me to do? Did you ever think about coming back to America? I can't go back. I've left America behind me. But you saved this country. I didn't do it alone. And I still owe you a dinner. Is that part of your mission too? Or is it an order? Or is it an invitation? Hmm. Or a proposal? I don't take orders from anyone now. Scholars tell us that the first spy in history was the snake in the book of Genesis. In that story, it was Eve who was tempted by the snake in the Garden of Eden. But this time around, it was I who tempted the snake and got away with the forbidden fruit of knowledge. Forgive me, snake. I wasn't sent by Khrushchev. I'm not a KGB spy, and I never worked for the NSA. I'm an agent of the People's Republic of China for the General HQ 2nd Department of the People's Liberation Army. It was all a lie. I tricked you. And I'm sorry. The philosophers still exist in China, too. You see, my mission was to find out where Volgan was hiding the philosopher's legacy and steal it. So I infiltrated his base as a KGB spy. The two NSA codebreakers who defected in 1960 were actually both men. 
The real Adam never showed up at the meeting place. Saving me the trouble of having to eliminate him. I sneaked in by pretending I was Eva. And you and Sokolov and Volgan, you all believed me. The philosopher's legacy was originally held in common between the U.S., Soviet Union, and China. We couldn't let the Russians and the Americans take it all for themselves. The Chinese government had its eye on the legacy, too. I got the film containing the legacy, and also the nuclear missile launch data from the Shagohad. Five years ago, the Soviet Union stopped supplying us with nuclear weapons technology. Since then, China's Liandon easing hydrogen bomb and space rocket projects have fallen behind. But with this data, our country will be able to develop its own nukes. We'll create a deterrent force to rival those of the U.S. and Soviet Union. Everything has gone according to plan, thanks to your help. I, too, am one of the philosophers. I'm an agent of the Philosophers, a graduate of one of their charm schools. I was raised in a joint U.S.-Soviet-Chinese facility to become a sleeper agent. This was before the war. Back then, they were collecting children from all over the world. As a result, I'm indistinguishable from a native-born American. So it didn't surprise me when you and Volgan couldn't tell the difference. But she knew right from the beginning. She knew because before the war, she was at one of the philosopher's schools, too, as an instructor. The boss was the only one I couldn't fool. She was the only one who knew I was a fake. She told me everything. Why did she open her heart to me like that? At the time, I, I couldn't understand it. But now, I think I do. Snake. She wanted you to know the truth. She chose me to tell you. That's why she saved my life. I've lied to you so many times, but not this time. My orders from the government were to obtain the legacy. And to eliminate everyone who knew the truth about what happened. In other words, I'm supposed to kill you. Not because we loved each other. And not because you saved my life. But because I made a promise to the boss. And I intend to keep it. I just wanted you to know. And... You have to live. Snake, listen to me. She didn't betray the United States. No. Far from it. She was a hero who died for her country. She carried out her mission knowing full well what was going to happen. Self-sacrifice. Because that was her duty. Even the boss. I hereby award you the title of Big Boss. You are a true patriot.
rocks in the army. Someone like him to handle our top secret sneaking missions for us. A man who combines the qualities of a soldier and an agent. The boss's defection was a ruse set up by the U.S. government. It was all a big drama staged by Washington so they could get their hands on the philosopher's legacy. And the boss was the star of the show. They planned it so that they could get the legacy that Colonel Volgan inherited and destroy the Shagohat at the same time. Only a legendary hero like the boss could have earned Volgan's trust. Finding out where the Philosopher's legacy was hidden was to be her greatest mission. Everything was going according to plan. But then something happened that no one could have predicted. Colonel Volgan fired an American-made nuclear warhead at Sokolov's research facility. Khrushchev demanded that the U.S. government provide proof that it wasn't involved. They couldn't just abort the operation to steal the legacy. So the operation itself was greatly expanded and revised. The authorities in Washington knew that in order to prove its innocence, they'd have to get rid of the boss. And that one of their own would have to do the job. The public couldn't be allowed to find out about it. Not ever. This, they concluded, would be the best way to keep the whole thing under wraps. The boss wouldn't be allowed to come back home alive. And she wouldn't be allowed to kill herself. Her life would be ended by her most beloved disciple. That was the way the government wanted it. That was the mission she was given. And she had no choice but to carry it out. Her death in your hands was a duty she had to fulfill. Out of duty, she turned her back on her own comrades. A lesser woman would have been crushed by such a burden. The taint of disgrace will follow her to her grave. Future generations will revile her. In America, as a despicable traitor with no sense of honor. And in Russia, as a monster who unleashed a nuclear catastrophe. She will go down in official history as a war criminal. And no one will ever understand her. That was her final mission. And like a true soldier, she saw it through to the end. But I think she wanted you, of all people, to know the truth. She wanted to live on in your memory. Not as a soldier, but as a woman. But she was forbidden to tell you herself. That's why she told me. Snake. <laughs> History will never know what she did. No one will ever learn the truth. Her story, her debriefing, will endure only in your heart. her life and her honor for her native land. She was a real hero. She was a true patriot.
Thanks for watching, chat. Enjoy the credits. I'll sign off afterwards. Cheers, everyone.
Yes, Grozny Grad and the Granin Research Facility have both been wiped out without a trace. I understand, sir, but they were necessary sacrifices. Yes, the CIA has taken care of the boss themselves. I believe the White House will be satisfied. Khrushchev is finished. Your time has finally arrived. Yes, the American president is relying on us to keep a lid on the whole affair. We've got him by the balls. It should make a valuable trump card in future negotiations. Yes, Chief Director, of course. I'll keep the KGB informed. Yes, it's me. The boss has accomplished her mission. The philosopher's legacy is now safely with us, in America's hands. With this money, yes, the philosophers can finally be revived. The film we handed the Chinese was a fake. <laughs> Peking must be in an uproar right about now. I'm afraid so. Only half the money has made it back to the United States. The KGB must still have part of the legacy. Yes, the weapon has been reduced to ashes. That's right. Grozny Grad has been obliterated by the Davy Crockett we brought in as well. Yes, that was the boss's work too. Speaking of which, I've obtained something from Granin that you might find interesting. It's a revolutionary new nuclear attack system. Perhaps it might just come in handy someday. Yes, we have John, I mean Snake, to thank for that. Khrushchev believed it as well. Yes, they bought our story. I don't think they'll be making a fuss. The secondary alert has been lifted as well. And the Soviets still haven't discovered my true identity. They have no idea that I've been triple crossing them. I will continue my activities as a contact for the new government. Yes, it appears that no one knew that I was Adam. Of course. I'm always at the CIA's disposal, Mr. Director. There we go. That's a wrap. Let's take a look at these stats. 851, very short playthrough compared to our in-depth ones, which can approach 20 hours. Four saves. 14 continues, 11 alerts, 90 kills, mainly at the bike chase. You know, we did a few extras here and there, a few extra calls, but for the most part, we kept it short and sweet. But uh, hopefully nice for a change. And I guess it gives some people the chance to actually watch a whole playthrough. Um, which usually can't be done if it's like a 19-hour playthrough or something like that. Um, but yeah, there we go. Um, let me just take a look here as well. Got the single action. I'm going to save, even though we usually do the in-depth runs on extreme difficulty. This was European extreme. But yeah, that's going to be it for this evening, guys. Uh, I'm just trying to reload my dashboard here just to see if I have to thank anyone. Uh, Sonic Steak Eater, thank you for the seven months. Cheers. Pelagius as well, thank you for the three months. 
And I think that's everyone. Uh, everyone who donated earlier for the end's fate, thank you again. And yeah, I think that's, uh, that's, that's about it for this evening. Um, if you want to keep up to date with when I'm streaming, what I'm doing, exclamation mark Twitter in chat if you want to follow my Twitter, or exclamation mark Discord to join my Discord. Um, and of course, there's the new YouTube channel, which I will hopefully be uploading to sometime soon. Uh, hopefully, I'll have a link for my uh, my archive uh, channel as well soon. Uh, Gorlab, thank you for gifting the sub to Fab as well. Cheers. I will probably be back tomorrow with another stream. I'm not sure if I'll be doing MGS. Maybe I'll continue FF14 or do something else. Or uh, maybe I will feel like doing some MGS. We'll see. Uh, I'm sure there'll be some MGS soon enough anyway, regardless of when it is. Um, yeah, guys, thanks for watching. It was a pleasure, as always. And I'll see you soon. Take it easy. Have a good one.